This broadcast is copywritten by the Sagu Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of the broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Sagu Sports Network consent is prohibited. Welcome to the Sagu Sports Network live from Lumpkin Stadium here in beautiful Waxahachie, Texas. You, I am Adam Ferguson, joined by my broadcast partner, Tim Roberts. Tim, it's another football Saturday, and we got a noon game here against Arizona Christian. I mean, you love these early kickoffs. It just feels like the biggest game of the week, and this is going to potentially be a classic because, I mean, these games are always classic between the Firestorm and the Lions. We are joined by our good friend and and sponsor and, and, and founder of MidwestSports.net, Joey McWilliams. Joey, how are we doing today? Hey, we had fun. The sun is out big time, no question, and it should be a great day as you talked about. Joey is our resident expert on the NAIA. Tim and I have a pretty good in-depth knowledge of the Student Athletic Conference because that's what we cover on a weekly basis. But, Joey, uh, let's talk top 25 here for the NAIA. Uh, it's a little bit different. We talk about this all the time. In, instead of a weekly poll, it, it's double. It's bi-weekly. Every two weeks I come out with new rankings. Uh, last Saturday, some pretty big shakeups. Walk us through uh, – Probably what was the biggest upset of the week? Well, the biggest upset of the week, I think, was Peru State over Baker. It was a 19-14 contest, and Peru State really took control. They played solid on defense. They kept Baker to just seven points through the first three quarters. The Wildcats do get a touchdown, actually got an interception, and were driving in the closing minutes of the game, but the Bobcats held on, preserved the 19-14 victory. What makes this a big deal is what it means for Baker. This is back-to-back -back losses. That's the first time that's happened to the Wildcats since 2014. They're still in good shape to make something happen in the heart south, but they really do need to win from here on out. Baker, one of the perennial powerhouses in the NAIA. So it is, like you said, it says 2014, so it's been eight seasons since we've seen back-to-back -back losses uh, for that Baker squad. Now we talked about a team that's dropping in the top 25. Now we're seeing some schools, we're seeing some shakeups here. College of Idaho, one of the biggest risers in the top 25. They go from 17 to 11 where Baker was. Talk to us a little bit about what that means for the College of Idaho, Joey. Well, what it means is, is really not as much until they continue playing because College of Idaho has uh, one loss, or excuse me, they're the only undefeated team. So many of the teams in the frontier have the one loss, and they're going to have to play each other, many of them, two times. Not everyone, but many of the frontier conference teams have to play each other more than one time. And for College of Idaho, that's one of those teams today. They are hosting Eastern Oregon, the first of two matchups against the Mountaineers. And the Mountaineers are 0 4 today, does bode well for College of Idaho, but having the, the no loss on the schedule still is good for them and just about in that top 10 too and of course you know you want to be in that place as the month of October is about to begin you get to the end of it and as we are still early on in the season we saw another upset last Saturday a comeback actually from from Roosevelt scoring 28 on unanswered to take down a top 10 team in Concordia that jumps Roosevelt all the way up to number 20, and it is, it's hard to get into that top 25. you got to either have a long line of respect or, like Roosevelt did, pull a huge upset against Concordia. They take on Lawrence Tech today. They're on the road today against a 1-2 and two team, and I think that's good for them because they can continue with the momentum. I think the Lakers are in good shape to do that. But it's a big win over Concordia, and uh, that, that, getting that victory against a team that was favored so highly and at the top of the – the preseason polls within Mid-State's league play, getting that big early lead, or excuse me, getting the big win early on, having to come back and do it, says a lot for the fortitude of the program as well. Now, we talk about the Student Athletic Conference a lot. They are starting to get some of this national respect inside that top 25 and even inside the top 10. Uh, Ottawa of Arizona, they are number seven at this point, went from number 10 to number seven after their victory last Saturday. But there's some other teams receiving votes that are starting to get people talking uh, about the Student Athletic Conference, who many viewed as maybe not a serious contender for any sort of playoff push. But, but Joey, talk to us about some of these other teams that are receiving votes. Well, a couple of them in particular are Texas Wesleyan. Texas Wesleyan and Langston. The Rams lost a, a heartbreak. Realistically, this was a heartbreaking loss to OUAZ last week. The Rams, a dark horse favorite, the team that you and I actually have talked about before as uh, being a team that could make some noise, not only in the Student Athletic Conference, but possibly into the postseason. They come up a little bit short, and it came down to the wire. There was still an opportunity at the end for the Rams to pull off the upset, and it would have been an upset against OUAZ. Get the one loss. They have a week off. They can shake it off a little bit and restart things there for Texas Wesley and the other team, Langston. The Lions have dominated in this conference 
for a number of years. Realistically, uh, back in the CSFL days, before the Sooner Athletic Conference was <laughs> yep. what we know it as right now, when Arizona Christian came in, they shook things up a little bit. OUAZ has really taken the reins for a while, but Langston undefeated until the last three games of the season last year, and then the wheels came off and then started flying in every possible direction. I mean, there's no way around that. Langston is putting themselves back in a position to be there in October again, undefeated, and I think it's an easy win today. They're on the road taking Arkansas Baptist. They should be 4-0 at the end of the day. Talking about that win for Ottawa of Arizona against Texas Wesley, and Tim, I believe you and I both picked Texas Wesleyan to win the Sooner Athletic Conference. That's a big win for the it, Spirit. It's a huge win. It puts them in that pole position. But as we learned last year, it's not over yet. Texas Wesleyan, uh, they've got some big games ahead of them they can win. And Ottawa, Arizona, there's nothing but trap games left for them now. <laughs> a lot of yep. big matchups still between now and the end of the season. So, But for now, driver's seat clearly after that huge win against the Rams. Absolutely. Some more matchups that are today, other than the one you're going to see here in Waxahachie, uh, to keep an eye on. Pikeville, who is receiving votes, to, heads to Tennessee to take on number 13, Bethel. Number 22, St. Thomas hosts number 21, Southeastern. And then Montana Tech takes on number 17, Montana Western. That's important because Arizona Christian, who is going to be moving to the Frontier Conference next season, will play end up playing both of those teams. So it's definitely uh, a few matchups today on this Saturday that are gonna, you're going to want to keep your eyes on. Uh, Joey says it's hot. I say it's hot. Tim, I know you say it's hot. But let's go down to our field reporter, Jazz Williams, for what it feels like down on the field for today's game. Jazz, down to you. Thanks, Adam. Coming off a road trip to Arizona, the Lions are back in Waxahachie on a hot Texas Saturday afternoon. It's a bright and sunny day with low cloud coverage and temperatures starting at 90 degrees and only getting much hotter, reaching up to 97 degrees. With addition to the turf, it will only be much, much hotter towards the end of the game. No anticipated rain or lightning, but the wind is coming in strong at 50 miles per hour, starting from left to right on your screen, which we expect to have some impact on special teams today. That's all from down here. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you for that. We'll hear from her again here in just a little bit. So we move from the national scale, the NAIA scale, to the Student Athletic Conference scale. Again, one that you and I know very well, Tim. And Joey, you have a close personal connection to the, the Student Athletic Conference as well. Last week, Langston, like you said, defeated Wayland Baptist 56-24. Again, they are undefeated, as they seem to be almost uh, early in the season every year until, you know, we get to the, the end of the season where the kind of you get beat up, you, you, you're missing players. But they beat Wayland Baptist. Uh, OPSU defeats Texas College 53 to 6. Louisiana Christian beats Air, or defeats Arizona Christian, excuse me, 40 to 26, who we'll see today the firestorm. And then as Joey said, number 10 at the time, OUAZ defeats Texas Wesley in 27-22 in a very tightly contested ball game and that moves them up to number 7. So the spirit getting national attention. I don't real quickly before we get into our predictions for this week's games, Joey, I wanted to ask you, how realistic is it for OUAZ to make some noise in the playoffs? I think it's very realistic. I mean, they just have to continue playing like they're doing. And another thing that would help OUAZ make some noise in the playoff, not get matched up against Morningside <laughs> in the first round. That, that's true. That's going to hinder anyone from making any <laughs> real noise in the playoffs. But they, they had a tough loss to College of Idaho two years ago. They had a closer loss against Morningside last year. And, and you guys know these things, they, they go in step. They go incrementally. And I think OUAZ, with a proper matchup, could, is ready to take that next step. Another big week this week in the Student Athletic Conference. Let's go through, through some of these games and get our thoughts and who we think are going to win. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about, Texas College versus Wayland Baptist. Tim, who do you have winning this matchup? Got to go Wayland. Texas College obviously just has not had a win since 2019. Wayland has underachieved from time to time, but I think they should have today pretty easily. Joey, how about you? Texas College on the road for the third straight time. Wayland Baptist at home for the third straight time, and the folks are going to be celebrating the win in Wayland Baptist today. Texas College just is not there yet. It would be a huge upset. Like you said, Wayland Baptist is underachieving this year, but it would be a huge upset for Texas College to take the win against Wayland Baptist. I, as well, would pick Wayland Baptist, so we're all on the same page there. Uh, a little bit different here, I think. This, this one's kind of a coin toss. OPSU versus Lion, the 6 p.m. game tonight, Central Time. Uh, I've got Lion taking the win. I think Lion uh, has improved year over year. I don't think that they're ready to take that next step as far as contending in the Student Athletic Conference, but I think that they're a solid ball team this year. Tim, how about you? This is a real middle-of-the-pack battle. Uh, who's who's going to be on the top part of that second tier? Who's going to be at the bottom part? I'm going to go with the Scots as well. I, I like how they've looked the last uh, few weeks and the last two years, really, getting a little bit better. Uh, so, yeah, give me the Scots. 
Joey, how about you? Well, I, these are two one-win teams, and, and ordinarily I would say compare the wins. Lion, I believe, has the better win. Lion with the win over Missouri Baptist, shut them out of the end zone. They scored just 12 points. Missouri Baptist showing itself to be a, a moderate team in the Mid-States League. Oklahoma Panhandle State, the win over Texas College. Not as good a win. However, I think the Aggies have momentum. I think Coach Jeske's squad has shown that it can put points on the board, and I think they do so today. So I have Oklahoma Panhandle. OPSU for Joey. I, I, you know what? You got to respect it. You have to respect it. Next matchup, uh, 6 o'clock tonight Central Time. Langston receiving votes. Langston undefeated. Taking on Arkansas Baptist, who we will see here next week for our homecoming game. So quick turnaround here for the Sagu Sports Network. I'm going Langston. I, I, Arkansas Baptist, one of the newcomers to the Student Athletic Conference. Again, not quite there yet ready to take that next step. Very new program. Tim, what do you have? Yeah, again, just not quite there yet. Langston, far too experienced. Uh, should have an easy night out in Little Rock. And, Joey, you talked about them earlier. I think we all know who you're going with yeah. here. Yeah, uh, Larry Harrington threw for more than 400 yards last week, and it's going to be nice in the evening because it's a later start out there in Little Rock. Uh, if Coach Morgan decides to let him throw the ball again, <laughs> talk him up for another 100, 400 yards. I mean, you know I love quarterback play, so let them, let them air it out. I like to see it. Next matchup, later, later game tonight, 9 p.m. Uh, Central Time. LCU goes on and takes on Auto of Arizona, now number seven, 9 p.m. Central Time. Uh, I really don't think that we're all going to differ here. I'm going with the spirit. Like you said, I think they have the driver's seat. I think they're in firm control. I think they run the table the rest of the year, so – Obviously, i got to pick them today. Uh, you know, I'm going to pick Ottawa, Arizona because they're the clear-cut favorite. But there is a mousetrap the size of the Grand Canyon out there right now <laughs> because this is a trap game. You get the big win on the road against Texas Wesleyan in Fort Worth. You're taking on the team that upended the entire conference last year when they beat Langston. They ruined the Firestorm's hopes this year last week. The Wildcats are the upset special. They have put it together since they had their week one loss here in Waxahachie. I'm going spirit, but they better be ready for an absolute onslaught are from you, the Wildcats. Are you sure? It sounds like you want to take Louisiana. Are you sure you're I, taking I, the spirit? I, I, whew, I want to, but I just know. I, it, it's, it's, it's a 15-point it's a spread for, for the, the spirit in my mind, so I can't go all the way. But I, if, I, if it was a 15-point spread, I might pick the Wildcats to cover. Wow. Okay. And then, and Joey, how about you? Okay. I can't be as dramatic as Tim about it. <laughs> I'm not going to follow that, but I agree with what he said and the premise. And I think the, that the folks down there with the white and yellow uniforms right now might say look out for Louisiana Christian not going to happen when there are zeros on the clock it'll be OUAZ and then we're going to go to the matchup that is happening today here just a little bit here in Waxahachie Arizona Christian the firestorm versus your hometown Lions the noon kickoff uh, Tim I'm actually going to start with you here who do you think's taking the win today here you in know what I love the way Sagu's defense has looked this year uh, I think Greg also has just inspired some life into them they move quick we'll break them down here a little bit closer I think they have enough to hold this Firestorm offense in check, and they can put just enough points on the board to win a narrow one here in Waxahachie. Joey, our guest, who are you going with here today? Well, it, it is a beautiful day. It's a warm day. We've mentioned that, but it's a beautiful day. And I think this is a time that we might see something that I don't think either one of these teams have seen yet this year. Keaton Tudyk, Aiden Quinn, star running backs for both these programs have not lived up through this point in the season to what we thought that they might see. So I think if – if, one of these running backs, whether it be Dudek for Tagu, whether it be Quinn for Arizona Christian, steps up, makes things happen today on this beautiful afternoon. That's going to put that team in a very good position, and I think it's going to be Dudek. So I'm going with Tagu. Tim, you talked about the defense, how good the defense has been. I'm going to go the other side. The offense has been a little hard to watch sometimes. It's a young quarterback making mistakes. You kind of expect that at this point. But when you look up front at the offensive line play, which we'll talk about a little bit, they have not been able to get the All-American running back going. You can talk about defense all day long, but when that defense is going to be on the field as much as I think they're going to be on the field, they're going to get tired. They're going to give up points. It's inevitable. I'm going with Arizona Christian. Don't come after the, me. The I'm, just heel going turn. With, I'm just going with what it's I think. It's Hollywood Adam now. He's oh, gone heel. Oh, my goodness. No, <laughs> no, just, letters. I'm just going with my gut. I think that Arizona Christian is going to possess the yeah. ball more than Sagu's offense will possess the ball, and I think that just simple math equals more points, despite how good Sagu's defense is. It could is. be an absolute war of attrition today as it'll feel triple digits on that field. Yeah, you don't want your defense on there for 40 minutes no, out of this game. Absolutely not. Well, that's our predictions for this week. Joey, thank you for joining us. Uh, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about where they can find you and what you have going on? 
Well, listen, I, I appreciate the opportunity to get to be with you guys. It's always a privilege. It's fun to be here and walk the hat you right now, and I'm looking forward to watching a good game. You can follow me on YouTube at Midwest Sports Net, Midwest Sports Net. Please like videos. Please subscribe to the channel. It really does help. And we have a host of other actual websites, including MidwestSports.net. But check us out online on YouTube. Boy, he just sounds like a YouTuber, doesn't he? <laughs> Smash that like button, <laughs> click subscribe. Now, we always love having Joey here, and it's a treat. Tim and I have both been guests on his uh, show on YouTube, and it is always a blast. So, again, Joey, thank you so much for joining us today. Don't go anywhere here in just a little bit. Tim and I are going to break down the players and keys to the game for Sagu versus Arizona Christian right here on the Sagu Sports Network. We'll be right back. Raising Cane's makes perfect chicken finger meals by marinating every chicken finger for 24 hours. That's a long time. I don't even know what I was doing 24 hours ago. But those mouth-watering chicken fingers were marinating the entire taste-tempting time. Impressive since 24 hours is longer than most celebrity marriages. On that note, our chicken fingers, cane sauce, crinkle cut fries, coleslaw, and Texas toast are the perfect marriage of fresh and tasty. Raising Cane's, one love. Welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network. Now, Tim, it's time we talked about the national look. We talked about the Student Athletic Conference look. We're kind of trickling down here <laughs> to the matchup that we have here today in Waxahachie. Again, the Arizona Christian Firestorm all the way from Arizona coming here to Waxahachie to take on the Sagu Lions. Uh, let's talk about the keys, Tim. I'm going to start with you. We, we know a lot about Arizona Christian, and unfortunately for us, but for them, they are moving to the Frontier Conference, but we've seen them a lot the last couple of years, and they've always been fun to watch. But... Let's find out what they have to do to win today. Well, first things first, hop on this new bandwagon in town called Stop Keaton Dudek. <laughs> uh, he has not found his footing, as you heard Joey mention a little bit ago, with the offensive line already helping him. In their two losses so far this year, they've given up 88 points and allowed over six yards per rush. So that stat needs to get a lot better. If this is the day that Keaton Dudek starts averaging six yards a game, uh, six yards a rush, they could be in big trouble. But if they can find a way to bottle him up like these other two teams have, they'll be in good shape. Second, hold on to the ball. It's the most simple things. Last week against Louisiana Christian, they fumbled three times, resulting in 14 points, and two of those fumbles came in the fourth quarter, essentially ending any rally bid. So it's just the most basic fundamental. Hold on to the ball, but you can't lose a turnover battle today. That's how Sagu stays in this game and pulls off a win. Lastly, Protect your quarterback. They have had 14 sacks allowed this year, and this is a fast Sagu defense. They come off the edges in lightning speed, and you've got some big guys in the middle just disrupting everything. That's over three sacks a game. You do not need that trend to continue because if you start losing that battle, you'd be looking at four or five, six sacks a day. So protect your quarterback, keep him standing up, and you'll be in good shape. Now, believe it or not, folks, Tim and I prepare these key these keys to the game separately. We don't really <laughs> talk about it until we get here on Saturday because mine are about the inverse of yours for Sagu. Get the run game going. You say stop it for Arizona Christian. I say get it going. Arizona Christian not very good against the run so far this season, but Sagu has not been able to get the run game going. Uh, Keaton Dudek averaging a little over two yards a carry. The holes just have not been there. Now they've tried to get him involved in the passing game, but you only do so much. You want to run your offense through your best player, and it just has not happened to this point yet in the season. Look for them to try to get it going today against a team that so far this year has not really done well against the run. Uh, the defensive side has just been so good. They've been, like Tim said, they've been so fast. They're getting after the quarterback. They're forcing turnovers. Keep it going. They're going to be on the field a lot today. I have a feeling they're going to be on the field a lot today. If you can keep your feet under you, just just keep going. Just 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 keep going like the, the little engine that could, essentially. Uh, get as much as you can. You're going to be tired today. And, and you, if you just do what you do best, get after the quarterback, play well in the secondary. This is an Arizona Christian team that, that passes the ball pretty efficiently. They don't have a ton of yards per game passing, but the completion percentage there and the quarterback percentage or the quarterback efficiency is there for Arizona Christian. And then lastly, 
clean up the turnovers. Sagu is minus three in a turnover category despite having four picks on the season so far. Anytime your defense has four picks for two games, you got to think that you're going to be in the positives in the turnover category. But their quarterback, unfortunately, has had kind of a rough start to his freshman, his freshman year and his Sagu career here. If you can win the turnover battle today, you got to think you're going to set your offense up for opportunities to score. So uh, look for Sagu's uh, offense to maybe be a little bit conservative today. We'll see. Not sure. Uh, we are going to go live to the field with Jazz Williams, who's with head coach Greg Ellis. Jazz, down to you. Thanks, Adam. Coach, tough road loss out in Arizona two weeks ago. How did you utilize this bye week to prepare for the firestorm today? Well, obviously, you know, we looked at film and see where we felt like we were deficient in certain areas. Um, and we did find some of those areas. And obviously, we worked very hard um, to improve in those areas. So hopefully, um, the guys are able to take what we did on the practice field and put it on the game field. The Lions have given up zero points at home this season. What will it take to contain the Firestorm offense today? Well, I mean, you know, teams get better and better as they go along. Sometimes it takes longer for offenses to gel together. And so this game is going to be a harder defense fault game um, in order for us to, you know, keep that zero um, streak going, if you would. Um, but obviously, you know, we feel like we're prepared for it. Um, we're definitely encouraging our guys to bust their butt to get to the football. Um, I think they know mentally what they need to do. Um, and I think it's going to come down to um, just the effort of getting to the football. Thanks, Coach, and good luck today. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Coach Ellis. Tim, we've heard from the coach. We've talked about the keys. Let's go to the players that are going to execute those keys. Let's start with Arizona Christian. First player first. It's got to be a quarterback, right? Quarterback Tyler Duncan. He's having a, a decent year. Not a, a great year yet, but a decent year. 433 passing yards, five passing touchdowns to two interceptions. Completion percentage just above 53%. I'd like to see that at 55% by the end of the day. But get this. Four rushing touchdowns, yep. so nine total touchdowns. He can beat you both ways. Second, you heard Joey mention him a little bit ago, running back Aiden Quinn. He's only had 16 carries this year, probably thanks to being behind in a lot of games, but in the last two games, he's averaging 7.2 yards a carry. So in a war of attrition kind yep. of game where you can start to establish the, some ground game, if he can keep that average, you know, not seven, but five or six, he can really have a really good game, channel the offense through him a little bit more. Last. Defensive lineman Moses Smith, two sacks on the season, four tackles for a loss, and get this, one pass broken up. You love to see it. You love to see a guy getting sacks and breaking up <laughs> passes. Uh, so he's, he's probably one of their best defensive players. Watch for him to disrupt what has been a sketchy Sagu offensive line so far this year and a quarterback who has struggled. He could be in Briley Green's face all day. Speaking of Briley Green, that is my first player to watch for Sagu. Had three picks last week. Now, if you have a seasoned, if you have a junior, senior quarterback, you expect him to have a short memory, bounce back the next week. He is a freshman, a true freshman. How do you bounce back? Let's see if we can see a little maturation from Briley Green today. It may be a lot to ask for freshmen, but I have confidence in him that he can do it. He was very good in high school, and I think that's translated well into what he's doing so far this year. He's just young. And he's going to make those mistakes down the field. Second, and I'm cheating a little bit here. Um, we talk about Keaton Dudek all day long, but it has to start up front. I'm going to call out the entire offensive line here. Uh, watching that game against Ottawa, the holes were not there. He just did not have room to run. A lot of times I saw some of those offensive linemen downfield not blocking anybody. I just think that they got beat at the point of attack against Ottawa. You've had a long while here. You had your bye week after a tough loss. Let's see if they scheme up anything to try to get him going against a team that struggles to stop that run. And lastly, I'm going to flip to the defensive side. Jalen Moss. Now, We've talked about him a lot over the years, and it's been a breath of fresh air. We really didn't get to see him last year, and it's been a breath of fresh air to have him back in the secondary because when he gets the ball in his hands, he turns into a running back, and that's not just on interceptions. You're going to see him return kicks and punts today too, and he is just – electrifying just fun to watch one of the best athletes if not the best athlete on the field at all times and is just so fast and is just a blast to watch so keep your eyes on number four today whatever you need him to do he is going to do it he is that kind of player an absolute x factor on this sagu defense now one, one big play could flip this game and if you're talking about a punt return for a touchdown or setting your offense up in great field position 
that could be a, a big decision factor. And, and we talked about what the offense may need you to do mm -hmm. if you're Sagu's defense. They may need a pick six. They might need a, 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 a strip sack that sets you up on the 15-yard line. The Sagu offense needs the help to get going and get a little bit of momentum. What can we expect today from the Sagu defense? Uh, you know, I, I think more of the same. And they looked spectacular out in Arizona against Ottawa, Arizona. They really did. They did not allow a point until late in the first half. And then that onslaught in the third quarter really came as a result of their offense. There was a fumble at the five-yard line on a kickoff, a couple of turnovers. The longest drive in this third quarter that put the game out of reach was 55 yards. They did not have to go the length of the field. This defense has been really good. They obviously had the shutout here at home. Haven't had a point at home yet. Uh, you got to imagine that got reiterated. Obviously, you heard Jazz Absolutely. mention it. Absolutely. Got yep. reiterated. Hey, we, uh, we gave up some points uh, out against the, one of the best offenses in the NAIA. We haven't given up a point at home yet this year. Let's keep that run going as long as we can. If you're Coach Ellis and you know what the def a defensive mind, heck, we, we talked about it at length. Uh, in the first game here yeah. in, in Waxahachie, a defensive minded head coach, he played defense in the NFL. If you're Coach Ellis, do you scheme up today? You know you need to get turnovers. You know you need to get takeaways, keep them behind the sticks. Are we going to see a lot of pressure put on Tyler Duncan today from the defensive side? I imagine we're going to see a lot of pressure early on and then drop back, then drop back. Get those, force him to get the ball out quick, and then start jumping some routes. They they have a, they were close to jumping some routes against Ottawa Arizona. They had uh, three picks yep. against Louisiana Christian, so they can make that. And they've, like you said, Jalen Moss. They've got some guys back there who can make some difference. Damaris Heron. I mean, he wreaked havoc here two, three weeks ago. Now I lose track how long it actually was. <laughs> that bye week just messes up your schedule. It does, yeah. Uh, so a lot of big playmakers out there. So I, if I'm him, I'm sitting pressure early getting in the quarterback's head, and then seeing what you can steal. And it's a new-look defense. It's a defense that's meant to send pressure at the quarterback. They moved from a 4-3, which they ran last year, and had a very good defense. They moved to a 3-4 and still had a very good defense, despite almost all the names being the same. Yeah. You, don't, you don't often see guys go from a 4-3 to a 3-4, change schemes up completely, and still make as big of an impact as they're making in a completely brand new scheme. Credit to Coach Ellis, just taking over at the, at, in the middle of the summer practically. Yeah. Yeah. Qu that quickly identifying that these players could make the transition and coaching them into it. Because yeah, it looks like these guys have been playing 3-4 for their entire <laughs> football careers, how quickly they've taken to it. I think he saw they could handle it, and he coached them into it real fast. So, And you talk about Sagu's defense being on the field too long. Well, if they're forcing three and outs, then it might be the exact opposite. If Sagu's offense can sustain any sort of drives. Uh, we can see, I, I, I think we counted it up. There were 20 punts in our last game between the Wildcats yep. and Lions. Yep. I don't think we're going to reach that. But I could see us at 14, 15 today, so we'll, we'll keep track. I hope we don't hit 20 punts you, again. I, Nobody wants to see Not I, even the punter wants to no, see that. No, I, I, I am an offensive guy. I want to see points put up. I want to see each quarterback six touchdowns, seven touch. I want to see 48, 45. I love that Big 12 football, I guess I could say. The, the, the no defense, tons of scoring. But, you know, today I don't think we're going to get that between these two teams. It could be a very low scoring affair. What you can expect, though, is a close ball game. Uh, obviously, Arizona Christian has only this rivalry they've won seven of the eight games but six of those wins have come by less than a touchdown in fact if you only factor in the last six games between these two teams Sagu has outscored the firestorm even while losing five of those six games because their only win was a 37 point blowout yeah so uh, it has been that tight I would not expect anything different today but a very tight one score game don't go anywhere. We're going to go live to the field for the introduction of the captains, the opening prayer, the national anthem. Coming your way, the Arizona Christian Firestorm versus your hometown Sagu Lions right here on the Sagu Sports Network. At AGCU, we are committed to forging relationships centered around faith and finance. 
Our purpose is to provide financial solutions to help you succeed while we tithe 10% of our annual earnings to ministry and community organizations. Your mercy is never ending. Your kindness never fading. Jesus, you're always with me. You're always with me. Thank you. At this time, we ask everyone stand and remove their hats as we honor God with prayer, led by Dr. Clancy Hayes, Dean of the College of Bible and Church Ministries. Then please remain standing and face the flag as we honor our nation with the singing of the National Anthem of the United States of America, performed by SAGU alumni, Riker Russell. Let us pray. Father, thank you for legs that run, arms that tackle, and hands that catch balls. May they each come out of this game intact. Thank you for the coaches on both sides of the field. Please give them wisdom, guidance, and the ability to get the most out of their teams. Thank you for the officiating team. Help them to call a fair game. Help them to be able to see clearly and to call consistently. And Lord, thank you for our fans. Help them to enjoy themselves and to demonstrate Christian character throughout the game. I ask these things in the strong name of Jesus, amen. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets ran. Singing in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Who oh, said as that star spangled banner yet away? Oh, the land of the free and the home. Welcome back as we get prepared for the coin toss. Your Sagu captains Isaac Gowdy, Zach Nelson, Latrell Tibbet, and Devontae Crownover. We see Tyler Duncan 
out there for Gentlemen, Arizona Christian. Welcome as well as to today's Lewis. coin toss. Arizona Christian, you're the visitor. Hester Have a coin Weller, here. We know Heads. very well. Tails. Wearing number 97. Make your Tails. As well Tails. out there for Tails. Arizona Christian. Toss it in the air. Let it fall to the ground. Tails is And Stefan Peters. Your captains for the Firestorm. It is Tails. You've won the toss. Arizona Christian has won the toss and deferred their choice to the second half. Southwest Assembly, you want the ball? Which end would you like to kick from? From the scoreboard. Put your back to the scoreboard. And there you have it. Not a surprise. Typical strategy the these days is to defer. Southwestern Assembly. And in a game. Where you have to imagine Arizona Christian is looking forward to what they might be able to do to this Sagu offense. If they can set that tempo from the very first drive with a quick three and out or something, that's exactly the way we want to play this game. For Sagu, a team that took them late in the first game to kind of get going on offense when they finally put up 27 points and then really struggled last week against our – Last last football week, two weeks ago, <laughs> against the Spirit, right? To to really get anything going, uh, you know, early on in that game, they had a chance to build a lead. Uh, they had a, a missed field goal, I believe, a missed extra point, uh, a drive they settled for a field goal attempt on that started, I believe, inside the twenty. Uh, it just was not what you want to see. Back to return for Sagu will be number four Jalen Moss, as well as number eighty-four Justin Campbell. We've seen them both be electric in the kick return game. So either way you kick it, you're looking for trouble if you are the Firestorm. Hester Naguera coming out to do the kicking duties here for the Firestorm. Of course, we know Nestor from, from a couple years ago, the, the walk-off game-winning field goal that got him some national attention. So he's a lot of fun to watch. He has returned to the field that made him viral <laughs> Back in March of 2021. That's still the weirdest part of that. Think about it. We were watching football in March. March of – what a weird season. <laughs> Never be another one like it. At least I hope not. <laughs> here comes Nestor Higuera on to kick off. And we are underway here in Waxahachie. It will go to Jalen Moss. Fields it inside his 10. Looking to make a move. Cuts it upfield. Lowers the shoulder. He's going to get driven out of bounds just past that 25-yard line down at the 27. And that is where we will see freshman Briley Green take over here for Sagu and this offense. You know, I said it all the first game and really watching that game out in Ottawa, Arizona, I feel like Briley Green's issues need to be fixed with a scalpel, not a sledgehammer. Yep. We're not watching a guy who can't play football. We're watching a guy who just needs to zone it in. And maybe today's the day. You know, he's, he's played a game at home, played a game on the road, and they're going to start off with five wide. So they, they're throwing this play. Keaton Dudek in the slot to the left of Briley Green. A freshman, empty backfield, takes a snap. Quick hitter, he's going deep down the sideline, looking for his man incomplete. Took a shot downfield that time to Jamal Long. Or I'm sorry, Paul Odidi on the first play. And from the very beginning, he was facing pressure, coming right up the middle. Looked like Jackson Ortiz forced that pass out probably a little sooner than he wanted to, so he couldn't line it up. Didn't, didn't know where Odidi was going to be quite yet. Just kind of had to loft it up there. Brings up a second and ten. Brings Dudik back in the backfield. A little bit of a, p a pistol formation. Sends Campbell in motion. He's going to hand it off to Dudik. Dudik makes that cut upfield. Good carry there on second and ten. He's going to make it third and two. They bring Justin Campbell in there. He's listed as a wide receiver, but acting as a tight end on that play, an extra blocker, that might be what you have to do to get this running game going. Telegraph it a little bit, and he's going to bring him in again. Watch for a run. Third and short. Here's Green. He hands it off to Dudek. Dudek slips. He's going to get brought down for no gain, and that brings up fourth down. And the Firestorm defense, after giving up a big run on second, are up to the task. And it looks like we might see the Sagu offense stay on the field. There's Haven't. no shifting on the sidelines. Jake Farrell here is going to win that battle against number 84, Justin Campbell. Just cuts up inside, circles around him, and chases down Dudek. If he hadn't, Dudek was going to get that first down. There's no movement. And, yeah, I mean, at this point, the play clock's ticking down. They are going to go for it. Fourth and two, and our first decision of the game is here. It looks like Green doesn't quite have the play. 
and we might see Sagu here. Oh, they, they do line up here. There's three on the play clock. Green takes the snap. He's going to hand it off. Here's Dudek. Dudek gets hit in the backfield and brought down. He's very close to that marker. That second effort from Keaton Dudek able to get the first down and move those chains. And that's all Dudek. I mean, you barely get the snap off. Shakes a tackle in the backfield, is wrapped wow. up at the 29 and reaches for it. Close to disaster as Sagu was having some miscommunication there. But the, the gutsy move to go for it on fourth and two on your own 34 yard line. They, I think the message is we're going to make this happen. We're going to have to do something to make this offense work. You got a lot of faith in that defense to go for it on your own, inside your own 40. First and 10 here for Sagu. They send Campbell in motion again. Here's Green. High snap. He fields it with one hand. Gives it to Dudek, and Dudek has nowhere to go. He's going to get brought down for a loss of one. Looks like the Firestorm are picking up on the Campbell as the extra blocker. That's the second battle he's going to lose to Jake Farrell. He had a bit of success on the first time, but these last two times he has not been able to win his fight against the defensive lineman right there. They got him for a loss of two, so make it second and 12. Four wide here for Green. He is back to pass, facing pressure, gets it across the middle and finds his man short. A little four yard gain there on second and 12. Finds Zach Fuller, a freshman tight end. Blanket coverage brought down almost immediately by Corbin Walling. Picks up just a few. Makes it third and long, third and nine here. Thought they got four, they gave him three. Third and long here for Briley Green. Already one fourth down conversion to start this game. We'll see what they try to set up here on third and long. Green sends a man in motion. Takes a snap, he's back to pass. Let's it go across the middle, incomplete. He had his man, it looked like Zachary Johnson across the middle, but broken up. Good coverage there by the Firestorm. Good coverage and a good read on the little wheel route by Keaton Dudek there. For a second, he's going to be wide open, but the linebacker pursued well. You'll see on the left side of your screen there, didn't really have the option. Had he thrown it to Dudek, he might have had a chance for a one-on-one, -on -one, but he had about another nine yards to gain had he caught it. So had to go down the field. So after the fourth down conversion, they only pick up a grand total of one yard and will have to punt this one away. Ryan Lewis on to punt, and it's a high spiraling punt. And it's going to land inside the 30 and take a very good Sagu bounce. Can they get there inside the five? He can. Wow, what a play. It's going to be downed at the three-yard line, and it was a foot race, and that foot, foot race was won by number 30 for Sagu. That was Kipatrick McGee gets down there and downs it inside the five. Looks like the return man is trying to fake out this defense or the, the kicking team. He's going to bounce at the 29. That's a Sagu bounce, but almost too much of one. Hustle. Ooh, it foot almost went in the end zone. Slam on the break. So not where you want to start if you're Tyler Duncan against this fierce Sagu defense at your own three-yard line. Special teams already making a big statement in this one. Duncan on first. He's going to hand it off, and there is nowhere. Guess who, Tim? Loss of two at the initial line of attack. Keandre Belcher big making an impact. Big number 99 rolling over to zero, oh and my. it hasn't made a change this year. <laughs> he is number changed by one number all the way back to zero to start, and he has been just as dominant. And the Firestorm are now backed up as far as they can be. They are stacked four wide to the left of Duncan. I can't imagine you'd throw a flare route in with a not bubble a screen like that. We'll see here. It's Watch second. the man at the bottom of your screen. That's second and 12. Duncan, he's going to step back and throw it deep down that sideline. One-on-one -on -one coverage, incomplete. Looking for his receiver at the bottom of your screen. That was uh, wide receiver number six. It was Damian Jones. And just spectacular coverage there by Lontarius McLean. Zagu is not giving these receivers room to work this year. They get to the quarterback fast, and he doesn't have much of a place to go. So third and 12 at the one. Big play here. Duncan, 
He's just going to hand it off, and it's going to go for a few, making it third and ten, back to that original line of scrimmage. And, Tim, I think that was just conceding the drive, giving your punter a little bit more room to work. And you've already lost two yards on a run. You don't want to risk trying to pick up, you know, trying to get a route open for 12 yards. It's just going to leave you open to a stack. So that's absolutely give him that extra foot and count on your defense to maybe bail you out it, it, on some good field position. It looks like Sagu, they may be bringing a lot of heat here on this punt. There's less ground to cover. He can't be that far back. And they do almost get there, but the punt is off. And that takes a good Sagu bounce. Bounces back. It's going to be downed at the 39-yard line. So Sagu with very good field position here. Looks to get something going here on offense as Briley Green comes right back out. That is a perfect demonstration. Special teams and defense teaming up to give your offense a chance. You get the great punt. Your defense comes right out. Not a yard gained. I guess by the end they picked up one yard after that third down run-ish. And you now are set up inside your opponent's 40. This is where you got to come away with points. Even early on in the game right here, you cannot leave this on the board. First and 10 from the 39. Here's Green, three out wide to his left. Hands it off to Dudek. Dudek, nowhere to go up the middle. No gain there on first down. This Firestorm front four here on defense up to the task here against Dudek. I haven't really lost a battle yet. Overwhelming this offensive line and Duda can make some moves, but not when there's three guys in his face. They've just not been able to get a push up front at all. There's no hole, no daylight for Duda to find. Once he finds it, he's electric, but there's just nowhere for him to run. Second and 10 here for Green. Takes a snap. He's going to hand it off again and again. Nowhere to go. They're actually going to bring him down for a loss of two on the play. There at the initial attack was Jake Farrell, who's having himself quite the first quarter start this game. That's three tackles already, and I'd say two of them for, for, for a loss. He is absolutely wreaking havoc up front. Sagu immediately faced with a third and 12. Third and long here for Briley Green. Comes out for wide. Keaton Dudek in the backfield to his right. Back to pass is Green. Let's it go across the middle of the field. It's popped up and it's intercepted. The Firestorm have the ball in their hands. Across the 35 out of bounds, just shy of the 40. Little tip drill there for the Firestorm and they come down with it. And the first turner, turnover of the game into the hands of the Firestorm's defense. Therefore, it was number four, Jordan Francis. Pass was intended for Justin Campbell. Green is going to zip it in there. It was triple coverage. He actually got it to Campbell's hands. Too much coverage, and it bounces out. That's, that's a dream for a defensive back when you see the ball pop up like that. Here come the Firestorm on first down. Hand it off to Quinn. Quinn lowers his shoulder. Good gain there on first down. Correction, that's Arion Ward on the carry. Firestorm will throw a lot of different backs at you with Tyler Duncan being able to run as well. Quinn is the lead, but they have spread the ball around so far this season. Second and four, Duncan back to pass. Quick hitter to the outside. He's got his man. He's got the first down and then some. Pass completed to number 24, Maurice Roquette on the outside. Well drawn up route tree there. Man on the far outside. Going to head up field. Quick cut to the outside. That gives you all the room you need for a big gain down to the Sagu 44-yard line. Firestorm after they found nothing pinned deep. Back-to-back -back big plays. And they go up tempo here, no huddle. Pistol formation here for, for Duncan. He's going to fake the handoff, roll out. Looks down across the sideline. He's got his man out of bounds. Good pick up there on first down. Play was almost blown up. Sagu at number 43, Chris Bacos, was able to shed a tack blocker and almost get into the quarterback's face. Damian Jones on the reception, second and five. Duncan hands it off. Here's Ward. Ward this time. Minimal gain. They're going to give him a no gain there on second. Makes it third and five. Damaris Heron in on that tackle. 
He was, I'm sorry, Jalen Moss actually is the one who came coming in making that tackle. Third and mid, third and five here for the Firestorm. Duncan gets his play from the sideline. Bunt set to the left three. He's going to send a man in motion. And he's going to keep it himself, trying to go up the middle. He's got, looked like he might have had a good shot there, get to the sticks, but he gets tripped up. That's going to make, make it fourth and three. Very patient here to avoid the loss, letting his blockers do the work, but gets tripped up. It will be close enough for them to go for it, though. Fourth and three here for the Firestorm. We saw Nestor Higuera good from 50 in pregame, so they could try it here, but when it's fourth and three, you obviously will want to go for it in this situation. Sends a man in motion. Duncan hands it off to Ward. He's trying Not to string it chance. out in a beautiful tackle on the outside by the Sagu secondary, Kip Patrick McGee. Turnover on downs and the turnover from Briley Green. The interception does not come back to bite Sagu as they get the ball right back. Too many men won their assignments, and so when the edge was not was not cut off, you've got too many guys trying to block. You have too few guys trying to block too many, and you saw McGee untouched, reading that play from the start, running to the only spot he could. Throwing him for a big loss and a turnover on down. So both defenses make big stands, forcing a three and out at the one yard line and an interception. And both defenses come right back out and clean up the mess their offense made. First and 10 from the 39 here for Briley Green. He's back to pass on first down pumps. Steps up, looks like he's gonna take off and he will, he slides down. He does get hit and a flag comes out. Briley Green did slide and then took a pretty big hit after the fact. Goes through his read progressions, finally realizes he has a better chance of picking it up than number tossing one. it to number five. Foul, late hit. Number yep, that's just going to be a automatic first down. hit on the quarterback after he slid. Kenyatta Kendrick gets the flag, so Sagu with a break there gets 15 added on to the end of the run. So that will put them in Firestorm territory just shy of the 40 at the 42. When yards are going to come as much of a premium as they seem today, the one thing the defenses can't do is hand, to, hand them three yards. Otherwise, they've been locking them down. Here is Green on first down. Sends a man in motion. Takes the snap. <sighs> and then Dudek hit immediately in the backfield. Just nowhere to run. Moses Smith almost unblocked. One of our key players in pregame. He had four tackles up for a loss coming in. Make it five. And it was, it was like the drill where it's just you versus the, the defensive lineman. There might, might as well have not been anybody in front of Keaton Dudek. And it looked more like the defensive lineman versus a tackling dummy on first down. Not really much fight, not really anything there uh, for Dudek. So it makes it second and 14. Four wide here for Green. He is back to pass. He rolls out. Looking for a man, a flag does come out, complete. Oh, oh, had his man down the middle, of the, or down the sideline, a little bit behind him, the intended receiver. I thought it might have had him there, but flag comes out in the area of holding. So this looks like it could be going back the other way. Holding. Although I'm not sure you Number accept this Number 77 of the offense. That penalty will be declined. Third down. That's and some confidence in your defense to accept the third and 14 rather than second and 24. Had Colby Tanner open down the field, but could not end up finding his man. That'll make it third and 14 after the holding penalty is declined. Four wide again here for Green, two on either side. Keaton Dudek in the backfield. We'll see what they draw up here on third and long. They send man in motion. Here's Green, back to pass. Deep drop down the middle of the field. Had Odidi wide open and just airmailed it. Could not find his big receiver who, if he hits him in stride, that's a touchdown. That is a complete touchdown. Well drawn up route. You hate to see that when you're having such trouble even getting anybody open. These DBs are locking down these wide receivers. When you get a bit of blown coverage and you have a route that wins like that, you have got to drop that in there. But it will be another punting situation. What was about a yard away from being 6 nothing. On to punt is Ryan Lewis from his 39-yard line. 
A high spiraling kick. Fair catch called for. He's going to bail out at the last second. And it's going to be downed right at the 16-yard line. They're actually going to mark it at the 14-yard the line. It did take an Arizona Christian bounce, so I thought they may put it up field about two yards. But they'll mark it down at the 14. So yeah. make that two punts for Lewis inside his opponent's 15-yard line. Yeah, he's doing his job. Uh, Penning where they need to be taking a look at the standings right now. And it's it, it, it looks like a two-horse race, but you have to factor in schedules at the moment. Uh, Texas Wesleyan has already faced some tough teams. They are still in this battle as Ottawa, Arizona leads the way. Langston with the toughest part of their schedule still Here's to come. Here's Duncan quick across the middle. It's completed to a man. He misses the tackle. He's up the middle of the field. He has got a first down yardage and then some into Sagu territory down at the 40-yard line. That pass looked like it was intended for a complete other receiver, but it ended up in the hands of his man number six, Damian Jones. I, that, it looked like the Sagu secondary just lost track of Jones. They were pursuing the underneath route, and they all bit on it. And Jones was left with a wide open gap to go to the 40 yard line. Huge gain on first down for the Firestorm. Now Duncan from his, from Sagu's 40 yard line comes out in pistol. Low snap, he's gonna keep it himself. He takes off to the left, he's got some room to run. He's gonna slide down after a gain of five on first down. Quick reaction by Duncan after the low snap. Threw off everything with the play. Saw he had the corner. Pick up an easy five yards. Second and five here for the Firestorm. Coming up on four minutes left to go in the first quarter. 0-0 zero, zero ball game. No offense yet for either team, but the Firestorm are driving. Another low snap. He hands it off. He's fortunate that he even got the handoff. That's going to be brought down for a loss of, we'll call it three in the backfield. That play looked busted from the beginning. That's it. Back-to-back -back plays. You need to clean that up. Otherwise, you were moving on this drive. Two straight shotgun snaps hitting the turf. Duncan was able to recover for one, but nowhere to go with that one. Asagu had already gotten well into the backfield. Brings up third and eight. Third and eight here. The Asagu defense has been very good on third down. They're bringing pressure up the middle. Duncan rolls out to his left. He's going to let it go, and it is intercepted. Sagu's defense comes up with a takeaway of their own. The diving interception brought in by Dylan Kaufman. So that evens it up one apiece in the turnover department. But Sagu's defense, we said they were going to be tired. It's a hot day, but so far in this first quarter, it's early, but they're up to the task. And credit with Chris Bacos coming with the linebacker blitz right up the gut. That's going to force Duncan to kind of throw it off his back foot, retreating. No one in the vicinity. And these teams have now each exchanged interceptions. Usually you get excited by big plays on the offensive side, but it has been an exciting defensive game for both of these teams. One turnover, one interception apiece, and honestly, really good special teams play by Sagu. And, and we talked pregame. You know I love my special teams play. So Sa all, all three phases. All three, win all three phases. phases. Sagu takes over at the 27, first and 10. Here's Green. Takes a snap. He's back to pass. Let's it go to the middle of the field. Off the hands of Zachariah Johnson. The middle of the field for Sagu has been wide open so far, and the throws are just off of these receivers being delivered by Green. Had a touchdown overthrown. That one, had it been a little bit more focused in, it would have been better still. Anytime you get your hands on it, you want to haul it in. And looking at how fast the Firestorm were retreating there, Johnson might have had the lane to take it all the way. When you're struggling this much, when you have two big missed opportunities like that on your last two offensive plays, it just feels like an extra gut punch. Second and 10 here for Sagu. Four wide, two stacked at the bottom of your screen. Here is Green, back to pass. He's going to roll out to his right. He can move a little bit. He lets it go incomplete. His intended receiver, Paul Odidi. Staying alive and avoiding the sack was about all he could do there. When the ball hits his hand, the Firestorm have already gotten through the first line of defense. And when it's the offensive line, it's the first and last line of defense. You're not going to succeed as an offense when your quarterback doesn't even have time to get the laces on the right part of his fingers before he's facing down a defensive line. Third and ten here for Sagu in this offense. They come out. Looks like they're going three wide, five wide, three to the right, two to the left, two at the bottom of your screen. They are letting the freshman by himself in the backfield, and that's going to 
They may get a delay of game here. They don't. It doesn't look like they no. got the, the playoff. No, I believe uh, delay of game. it's going to be oh, number one oh. on the offense. Five yard penalty remains third down. Delay a game, and Odidi launched right as it hit one with no snap. So they could have called false start or delay a game. Either way, you got to try to get the play off there. Third and 15 now for Sagu's offense. After the interception, you hate to see an offense go three and out, but Sagu's staring third and long right in the face. The same formation, five wide. Here's Green, back to pass. Steps up, lets it go to the middle of the field behind his intended receiver, Colby Tanner. Would have been short of the sticks anyway. He had a little bit of room to work with. He he did have room. Had this been delivered correctly, Colby Tanner would have had enough room for the first down. He was about a yard short of the sticks. He'd have picked up that first down. The middle of the field is open. That is the third time Sagu has targeted it, in which they've had a wide open receiver and have been unable to connect, that one being the most off target thus far. So Sagu will line up for their third punt of the quarter. I said we weren't going to hit 20. <laughs> we might. We're, 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 uh, the pace is quickening. <laughs> Lewis, end over end punt. Fair catch called for and brought in right at the 47-yard line, and that is where the Firestorm will take over. Best field position of the quarter. They've been pinned deep twice. They have entered Sagu territory twice and had a turnover on downs and an interception. So the Firestorm offense has, in fact, shown some life. As you see, 74 total yards to Sagu's six. But neither team has converted the third down yet. Three to the left for Duncan, one to the right. He is back to pass here on first and 10. Shakes off That's one defender, and he's going to get ultimately taken down. Just no room to work with as this Sagu pass rush has been very good today. Coming in waves, dipping underneath. Great move by Keith Hargraves. That's going to force Duncan to start fighting for his life with his feet. And then I believe it's going to be number 45, Jaden Chapel, who will come in and finish off the job. Second and 15 for the Firestorm. Back to pass is Duncan. He's going to try to take it up the middle, but he is met by a freight train. And that freight train is named Jalen Moss. Read it perfectly and was untouched. And Duncan looks shaked up, or a sh little shaken up on that play. He's going to come off the field. We may, we're probably going to see the backup quarterback come in yep. for the Firestorm. He has not hit the field yet. They're going to have to call a timeout. They are going to have point. to call a timeout. I backup quarterback can't find his helmet, it looks like. <laughs> That's your one job as a backup quarterback. Where's your helmet? All right, it looks like he's on the field now. It's going to be. Oh, oh, looks, no, like, uh, oh they're going, looks like they're bringing Tyler Duncan back Duncan in. Duncan back out to the game. Interesting. Huh. Don't know what he had to leave the field for. Duncan on third and 19, back to pass. Fakes right, goes left, and that is complete, but brought down immediately, in fact, for a loss of one there. So Sagu's defense ultimately forces 10 yards of negative progress. This is kind of an oxymoron, but ten, negative 10 yards there on that drive. Good job by the Sagu defense. Again, up to the task. Ferocious stand, and so many people got into the backfield that wisely, I believe watching that replay there, it was Noah Gibson slammed on the brakes and dropped back into coverage. He's like, wait, four guys are hurting the backfield. I'm going to drop back in case this pass gets thrown. That's how successful that drive was on defense. Low snap. The punt is a low line drive, but it is a spiral. And Look get out. away from it, but it bounces out of bounds past the 30-yard line. Almost looked like it was making a beeline for Paulo Didi on that side, or uh, rather Tri Isaac Gowdy. Uh, uh, I think, was it Isaac Gowdy? Oh, yeah, it was Isaac Gowdy. Yeah, almost clipped his heel which would have been disastrous. So Sagu will take back over at the 30-yard line with a little over a minute to play here left in the first quarter. Still a 0-0 ball game has been an absolute defensive masterpiece from both of these teams, the Firestorm and the Lions. Minute left in the quarter. You imagine we only have time for about three more punts before the second quarter. <laughs> here is Green, three stacked at the bottom of your screen. Comes out in the pistol. He's going to turn around and hand it off to Dudek. And once again, Dudek has nowhere to go. Actually going to lose a yard there on first down. Yet again, Jake Farrell in the backfield. They have several weapons. Farrell's going to stay patient that time. 
plants his foot, forces Dudit to go back inside where there was nothing doing. And he's going to wrap him up at the ankles for what is essentially a gang tackle and a loss of one. Clock hits 30 seconds. Five wide here for Briley Green. Three up top, two at the bottom. He is back to pass, faces immediate pressure, and slings it out. Had nowhere to go. Troy Edwards, the intended receiver, he just kind of had to panic and get rid of the ball as he faced immediate pressure. Throwing it into the vicinity, coming right up the gut. Stefan Peters, untouched. And even had that been delivered accurately, probably only gained of two or three, and quickly a third and 11. Third and long here for Sagu, five wide for Green. He's back to pass. Let's go to the middle of the field, and it's tipped and intercepted again. Another tip drill. This time lands in the hands of Riley Tucker, and the Firestorm will take over in Sagu territory. Almost the same exact situation, only that one is going to be broken up. That's all defense. Stefan Peters, after he brings the pressure on the last play to force the errant throw, he's going to break that pass up. For, as you said, the second tip drill interception of the quarter and the Firestorm take over in Sagu territory with the, their first time to start with this good a field position. A low snap. That's actually going to be a false start. A little bit debating on who jumped first. Offside, number five of the defense. It's going to go Here against Sagu. Remains first down. Sagu was pointing that they had been drawn offsides, but the rest did not buy it. And to hand it off to Quinn on first down. Not really much to work with there. A gain of one on the play. And that will be the final play both, of the quarter. Both teams not finding a way to end up on the scoreboard here after 15 minutes of play. That concludes the first We will face play. second and four as we turn around coming into quarter number two. A very, very about as defensive of a, of a game as you can get here so far in this one here in Waxahachie. Other than really two or three plays from the Firestorm uh, that picked up some big yards here and there, there was no other offense in that quarter. Definitely not from Sagu's point of view. Sagu's defense has now had five scoreless quarters here at home. They have not allowed a point still, and they have not allowed a point in the first quarter of all three games. So they are pulling their weight, uh, pulling a little bit more than their weight. Looking at the stats there, 63 total yards for Arizona Christian, negative one rushing yard. Sagu, five total yards in that first quarter. Neither team has had a third down conversion. A couple of smatterings of first downs here and there. It's a good word, smatterings. I like when you bust that one out, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's about all you can say about the uh, – there have been smatterings of offense. Uh, the, the proof the, – the concept of offense is on the field. The proof of its existence, <laughs> not yet. Second and four here for the Firestorm as we have flipped sides. Duncan hand, er, fakes the handoff, rolling out to his right, has a man wide open, and it is complete down the sideline, out of bounds, but enough for a first down. Fooled me, that was an effective play action. Sold it well, and that was enough to freeze the Sagu defenders and give number seven, Jonah Leon. Plenty of room to work with, and the Firestorm are inside the Sagu 30. First and 10, Duncan, two men in the backfield, sends a man in motion that is Leon. He's gonna keep it himself, fakes the handoff to Quinn. Tucks it and gets two on first down. First time we've seen them run the read option. Only a gain of two, but both offenses will just need to kind of keep their strategy shifting throughout this game to find any traction. Second and eight here for the Firestorm. Duncan still two men in the backfield. Takes a snap. He's going to keep it himself. Roll out to his left. 
looking to try to get it away. He does, and it falls incomplete. The intended receiver that time was Aiden Quinn. He stayed alive as long as he could. Just pursued from every angle, and that's just a, you know, throwing the ball so you don't take the sack. They are definitely in Nestor Higuera field goal range now as they face this third and eight. Ball to 26 yard line. So what you don't want to do is take a sack and take any concept of points off the board. We've seen Nestor make pretty big kicks in this direction before here in Lumpkin Stadium. So we know he's very capable of it. Third and eight. Here's Duncan back to pass. Agu brings pressure. He lets it go. It's a screen. Quinn has it. Tries to make a man miss, but he's brought down for ultimately no gain. A long play there to, to result in zero yards. And it feels like the offenses are just holding back a boulder at this point. That entire play was designed, not designed, the entire play's fight was to not lose any yards to keep this in field goal range. And here is Nestor Higuera. It will be a 44-yard attempt for Higuera. Wind is at his back. Low snap, the hold is down, the kick is up. It's a low line drive, and it is good. The first points of the game coming off the leg of Nestor Higuera, and the Firestorm take a three to nothing lead here in Waxahachie. Take advantage of the good field position after the turnover. They don't do a ton. They pick up just enough to get in the field goal range, and then they pretty much weathered the Sagu's defense. <laughs> they got inside the 30 and avoided losing 10 yards, as Sagu's defense is known to make you do. But they do get on the board and our 10th total drive. Watch this again. This is going to be a great recovery Good. by the holder as that ball almost skittered into his hand. That could have been disastrous. We saw Louisiana Christian actually, with their only scoring opportunity here three weeks ago, have a botched snap, which otherwise would have put them ahead at the time, three to nothing. Aguera comes out to kick off here after the successful field goal attempt. First points on the day, secured by the Firestorm. Three nothing ball game here in Waxahachie. Aguera's kick is a good one, it's long. It's gonna be fielded right at the one yard line. So a, a dangerous return attempt here, but Upended inside, just outside the own 10 yard line. That was Isaac Gowdy. This just played out unfortunately. Started facing the wrong direction. Had to bring it out since he had fielded it at the one. Those are always so risky on a kickoff. As a punt, you let that drop every single time. On the kickoff, you can't take the risk that it spikes up at the one and rolls out to the five. So a very well placed kickoff by Nestor Higuera. And Sagu's offense that has struggled so mightily will now start at their own 12-yard line. Tough field position here for the Lions. They come out three wide to the right, one to the left here for Green. Sends a man in motion. Turns around, hands it off. Cuts it upfield. Here is a good run there on first down for Keaton Dudick. Finally able to get something going there in the running game, and he gets it right at the sticks, and it looks like he's got enough for the first down and they will indeed move the chains. Just a little bit of daylight, not even pushing the guys back, just creating a little bit of a hole, and Dudek will get through it. He will make these moves. You don't have to dominate uh, the front line here. You don't have to open gaping holes. Just give him some wedges to get through, and Keaton Dudek will pick you up yards. Three bunch to the left of Green. Green back to pass here on first down. Let's it go across the middle of the field. It's behind his intended receiver, Zachary Johnson. In and out of his hands, it will fall incomplete. That kind of seems like it's been the uh, the narrative today. The, the Briley Green passes have been just behind his receivers. That crossing pattern was open. They are finding success in the middle of the field, but they are 0 for 4 on those pass attempts. Any of a couple of them have been huge gains. That one probably going to pick up about five or six at least. Second and ten here for Sagu in this offense. Green turns around, hands it off to Dudek. Dudek looking to make something happen here on second down, and he is brought down quickly, a gain of two. 
on second down. Feels like Sagu's offensive line is approaching things differently now. We're seeing a lot more guys downfield. That is the strategy, maybe. They're not going to try to bulldoze their way with holes. It is just spread it out. Get get one-on-one. -on -one. Don't even try to win your battle. Just try to knock the guy off kilter enough to give Dudek a little bit of running room. Third and eight. Bradley Green sends Tanner in motion. He's back to pass here on third and long. Let's it go. Looking for the sideline. Has his man on the outside. That is Tanner. Tanner up the field. Past the 40. Down just shy of the 50-yard line. Sagu finally converts on third down. And a good ball there by Briley Green. Good route tree. Two men up top that lead the way. Force the defenders to drop back. Tanner's going to plant his foot. Come back towards the ball. Have plenty of separation. Quick snap here. Hand off to Dudik. Dudik goes nowhere. They get again for no gain, makes it second and ten. This time, right in the middle of the pack, is going to be big number 99, Martin Rodriguez. He was helped out by a couple of other players, but he's the one who'd wrapped up Dudek from the start. Ne definitely nothing doing up the middle for Sagu. Dudek's, Dudek needs to find a way to get to the edges, but. There's been no seal there for him. Very good job for ACU so far today. A team that has struggled against the run so far this season. They've done a good job of shutting down Dudek. Outside one 10-yard carry. Here's Green. He's facing pressure. It's, the ball is out. It's on the ground. Picked up by one of his linemen. Tries to take off with it. It's going ultimately to be a, ultimately be a loss of two. But Bradley Green sacked and loses control of the ball. It makes it third and 12. Could have been a lot worse as it's Jalen Mitchell forces that out. And with negative two yards rushing, now Hunter Griffin, I believe, leads all players. <laughs> Third and 12 here for Sagu. Might be a bit of a stretch, but uh, <laughs> that, that, that's about as much forward momentum as the Lions offense has had for most of this game. It's an offensive lineman barreling forward to just make it a loss of two. Sagu already converted one third down this drive. Green didn't look like he was ready for it, facing immediate pressure, and nobody blocked. There was no blocking. The, the, the ball is live, and it is loose, and Arizona Christian comes up with it. That play, I, I'm not sure what happened. I, I think the center was the only person who knew the ball was being snapped, and then the offensive line just sort of stands around and almost, if Arizona Christian has scooped this, it's a touchdown. They were all just standing around. A uh, complete miscommunication, and yeah, I believe that's going to be the center just not knowing. Ball clearly out before we went to the ground. Disastrous drive for Sagu after their first first play of the game, after their first offensive gain of the, of the game at all. And the offensive line's got to move quicker than that. You can't be standing around watching that unfold. Tyler Duncan keeps it himself on first down and picks up four. It, it's one. It, it's one thing when it's a botch play and you all froze because you didn't, and you assume there's a false start. You're looking around, but once you see the ball rolling around, you all have got to be hustling. If the firestorm weren't all tripping over themselves, that's a touchdown. Third turnover on the day, forced by this firestorm defense. Two interceptions and a fumble recovery makes it second and six from the 23. Duncan, back to pass, looking over the middle. It's batted down. Good job there by the Sagu defense. They've got to find a way to step up and help out this Sagu offense. Batting that down. I believe it was Jaden Holcomb. Tough to tell. It was kind of delivered in a, in a crowd, a sea of arms there at the line of scrimmage. Third down, fumble. The ball is on the ground. Duncan picks it up, tries to get it out to his, to his right, and it's unbelievable that he was even able to get that ball off. It falls incomplete. That was that was interesting. That was almost a fumble and then couldn't get much more dangerous than that. He's actually lucky he airmailed it. And he's throwing that on the money. That's a pick six. The Firestorm are staying on the field here fourth, on offense. Fourth and six here for the Firestorm. A dude, looks like they get the play in from the sideline. And they will keep the offense out on fourth down. They've been stopped on fourth down once today by the Sagu defense. 
Sends a man in motion. He is back to pass. Duncan looking in the middle of the field. He's got his man, and he's got enough for the first down, and that will move the sticks for the Firestorm. Pass completed. Huge conversion. Duncan getting hammered as he throws, and he's going to fight for just enough. Zachary Cullop. He was hit at the sticks and fights forward. Firestorm not wanting to set up for that field goal. Duncan will hand it off here. Looks like Aiden Quinn on the carry. Correction, that is going to be Ward on the carry. Arian Ward. No, uh, no gain, maybe a gain of one there on first down. Makes it second and nine. Looks like they just ruled four progress had stopped. He was wrapped up by Keandre Belcher. It is a big time here. You don't want to go down two possessions. You've got to try to hold this to a field goal attempt. Here's Duncan, back to pass. Let's go to the middle field. His man wide open, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. And fortunately for Sagu's defense, Derek Anderson unable to bring that one in. And he was wide open. The pass is a little bit too high. That, that would have been a catch. Had Anderson hauled that in, that would have been a pretty, pretty amazing catch. Sailed just a tad. Anderson stands at 6'2". It's not easy to overthrow and you a know what? big receiver. I in believe the we missed this. This is Quinn Commons in the game. This is no longer Tyler Duncan. Oh, it is. It is. You are right. Quinn Commons in the game. Rolling out to his right. He lets it go incomplete. So that brings up third down. So we did see Tyler Duncan exit earlier with what looked like an injury. He got hit on a, on a quarterback keeper. And it looks like Commons may be, well, we don't know yet. We don't know if he's going to be in the rest of the game or not. But Duncan is on the sidelines with the helmet off. So we may see Commons for a little bit here as Nestor Higuera comes on for his second field goal attempt of the ball game. It will be a 32-yard attempt. So after the big fourth down conversion, Sagu's defense regroups and at least forces this to just a field goal attempt. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. And the Firestorm will take a 6 to nothing lead after the turnover on the bizarre series of events on that third down play for Sagu gifts the Firestorm with very good field position. They convert a fourth down, and ultimately it winds up in points. Really a big stand by that Sagu defense. The Firestorm took over inside the Sagu 25-yard line already in points position, and after they picked up that fourth down, obviously going for it on fourth and six, uh, they, they knew what that drive meant. They didn't want to keep this a one-score game after back-to-back -back turnovers gave them great field position on both drives. All credit to Sagu's defense of keeping this one within range at the moment as Sagu's offense has turned it over three times. Two field goals so far here in the second quarter for the Firestorm. Again, make it six to nothing. Still no touchdowns allowed at home. No for touchdowns Sagu's allowed. Defense. You're right. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Higuera on to kick off. And when both field goal drives come starting in your own side of the field, you almost even can't count those as points against the defense, can you? I mean, you wouldn't count a pick six against the defense. If the drive starts in field goal range, I mean, all, you're saying unless the defense gets an interception or multiple sacks. I mean, by, by rule, rule yeah, of the yeah, land, I know it's, it, does. It's, it, it counts, but it, it, it's a factor as well. Absolutely. A hundred percent it's a factor. If, if, the, if every single Arizona Christian drive had started at their own 20, this game's still scoreless right now. As it stands, 6 nothing ball game after the touchback off the boot of Higuera. Sagu will start with the ball at the 25-yard line. You want to get points here, but you also got to avoid a frustration drive right now. You're very frustrated. Don't want to turn this over again just by trying to make something happen too hard. No, hand it to Dudek. Dudek looking for any sort of room, and it is just not there. They're going to give him a gain of one there on first down, and that's a pretty generous one as there was just nothing working there for Dudek. It's, it's the same story over and over again for Keaton Dudek, a guy who lit up the NAIA last year with over 2,000 yards from scrimmage. And so far this year, the, 
the holes are just not there. Not even the holes, just the lanes, the, the movement. He's getting hit in the backfield on most plays. Second and nine, here's Green back to pass. Let's it go to the sideline, has Tanner. Tanner adjusts, makes a good catch and moves the chains. Colby Tanner, two catches on the day, both for first downs. That's a great adjustment. That Pretty much that same route that worked last time for the Lions. Tanner had to do a, a spin in the air to get back around to it. It was on target enough for him to make it. So two drives in a row now with completed passes that get you towards midfield. This is where it fell apart for them on the last drive. Can they sustain anything on offense? New set of downs here for Green in the Sagu offense. Three stacked to the bottom of your screen. Takes a snap, he's back to pass. Quick hitter to Dudek and it sails on Dudek. It looked like that was gonna be a pretty easy completion out of the backfield, but just kind of airmailed Dudek on the, on the flat route. And he had more time. I think he was looking at number three coming in there, uh, Jordan Francis. I think he saw Francis and thought he was coming straight for him. Francis pulled a quick U-turn to follow Dudek. Had he planted his foot and waited another half second, he would have been able to deliver that to Dudek. Sends a man in motion. Second and 10. Here's Green back to pass. Let's it go in the middle of the field, and it's brought in. He's got a lot of room to run. Zachary Johnson to the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Lions. Zachary Johnson takes the delivery from Briley Green all the way to the end zone for the 60, or sorry, 59 yard touchdown. And that was almost intercepted by two players, and just like that, you just stumble upon it. A huge touchdown pass. Threading the needle there. As he let loose of it, I held my breath expecting interception number three. It just fell through the arms of those defenders. And Johnson was able to waltz the rest of the way in. Sagu leads. Extra point is up and it is good. Seven to six now for Sagu after the 59-yard touchdown pass from Briley Green to Zachary Johnson. I don't, how did that get it? The great job by Johnson to keep his concentration. And Johnson it had to slam on the brakes and because a little bit of over pursuit by number 44 in coverage there, Clayton Dowdy was, had just over pursued a little bit. Pardon me, not Clayton Dowdy. Uh, that'd be, num oh yes, Clayton Dowdy. Number 44, Clayton Dowdy had over pursued a little bit and that made him, that took himself out of the play. And then the second man trying to cut underneath was just unable to lay a mitt on it. And once those two guys were gone, there was nobody downfield. So, hey, look at Sagu broke 100 yards. <laughs> a complete turnaround right there. They broke 100 passing yards. 100 pa oh, you're right, you're right. We're still, we're still sub 100 for the game. 100 passing yards, and I think around 80 of them came on those last two plays. So nothing, 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 nothing. And just like that, with six and a half minutes left in the half, Sagu takes a seven to six lead. You're right, 75 yards passing on that drive for for Briley Green. Had the long completion to Tanner, and then there was nothing going for Dudek. So I'm gonna say 74, 75 passing yards. The uh, low line drive kick was brought in by the up man. And Arizona Christian's gonna start out with a very good field position here. But yeah, I would say 70, 73 to 75 yards yeah. on that drive through the air for Briley Green. So Sagu, Takes the lead seven to six on the long touchdown pass from Briley Green to Zachary Johnson. And a little bit of pep in the defense's step now. You made these two big stands and finally your offense rewarded you. This is why you kept your offense in the game. If you hadn't scored there, you start thinking, man, if we give up field goals all day, we'll still lose. Duncan back into the game. That ball batted down right at the line. So we see Tyler Duncan. Good news for Duncan. Looks yes. like he was only out for a series. Enters, a enters the game again, so it looks like he's okay. Everything's good. But yeah, this has got to feel so great for the defense to see your team ahead now. And, and it gives you that extra life to go, okay, guys, let's lock them down. The offense can get a few plays here and there. Duncan, he's going to keep it himself. He takes off. Oh, wow. He's got enough for the first down, keeps his feet, and keeps going into Sagu territory. That's where Tyler Duncan is so good. Very mobile quarterback. Can get it done on the ground as well as the air. I don't know. I don't think that was a designed run. He took a step back. The receivers are looking back at him, waiting for the pass. 
and he saw the hole open up and took those easy yards and then spun off for a few more into Sagu territory. First and 10, Duncan back to pass. He's taking a shot downfield, incomplete, just out of reach of his intended receiver, number seven. Kind of ran a, bit, a little bit of a slot fade. Jonah Leon, the intended receiver. Carter Lincoln locked in. Those deep patterns can be so dangerous. He does not let himself get beat and then does not hook. the. He understands that the pass is overthrown, doesn't hook the receiver's arm. That's where they draw those pass interference calls. Very, very sound play from your defensive back. Second and 10, here's Duncan facing pressure, lets it go deep down the middle of the field. Incomplete finds nobody. A couple of deep shots here from Tyler Duncan. Looks like that arm is just fine. No, no little injury hangover there for Duncan. That one just kind of maybe a little bit of a miscommunication between Duncan and his receiver. And excellent coverage as well. Not allowing, you know, you don't have to interfere with a guy to not let him have a lane to cut back in. Just kind of stay in his way. Keep him on the outside and that ball falls harmlessly. Oh, Ooh, Sagu, they're going to have a free play here. Duncan steps back. He's going to let it go deep down the sideline. Underthrown. Brought in for a touchdown. The Firestorm take advantage of the free play. Takes a shot downfield for his intent, for his receiver. We saw him have one go through his hands earlier. That Outside. is Derek Anderson. Two of the and what a ball by decline. Tyler Duncan. Touchdown. Right in the breadbasket of his receiver, Anderson, in for the touchdown. And just like that, the Firestorm, pending an extra point, take another six-point lead here in Waxahachie. Heads up play. And you know you have the free play. You've already gone deep twice. Try him a third time. Your receiver just wins that battle, a little bit of hand fighting. Be able to get underneath it. The Time long out. play is going to result in a timeout here for the Firestorm. It looked like they had the offense back out on the field to go for two, and then they want to talk it over here. So, so hey, all of a sudden we got ourselves an offensive shootout. Yeah, where'd that come from? <laughs> two long touchdown passes. And that one is it's a veteran heads up play from a senior quarterback. You know you got the free play. And so because of that, you can throw a riskier ball, too. That when, when, you, when your receiver stands still, that's a riskier pass. That, that means that Isaac Gowdy can, can go up and, and – I'm sorry, can, uh, can, yeah, can go up and make that interception potentially. You've got the free play. Why, why not try it? He's it down there, and they punch it in. So three straight scoring drives now for the Firestorm. We'll see if they bring that offensive unit back on they, the field again. They, they will. They indeed will. I, I see Nestor Higuera on the sidelines, not even warming up for the kick. So they will indeed keep the offense out there here to go for two to try to make it a 14-7 ball game, a seven-point lead it would be for the Firestorm. Heavy package, three men in the backfield. Here is Duncan. They do take two-point conversions from the three-yard line here in college. He's back to pass, rolling out to his right. Facing immediate pressure, and it is intercepted in the end zone. I think we could just call it incomplete. Might have been intercepted, but doesn't do anything for the stat sheet. But it'll be 12-7 to 7 now after the failed two-point conversion. It will be Isaac Gowdy here, and that is a, a clean pick. Again, doesn't get to go on the stat sheet as an interception, but a failed conversion. So just six points, and Sagu will remain down just five. It all looks the same on the highlight tape, though, for Gowdy. <laughs> about to say, he, he doesn't, doesn't have to put a, you know, when he's putting together his, uh, his huddle page, he doesn't have to put together a little note that says, oh, this is a two-point no, conversion. No, no context, none. So, yeah, an offensive uh, game that a moment ago was about a total of 75 total yards all of a sudden looks borderline respectable. 149 yards for the Firestorm. Sagu just under 100, getting the ball back after their first sustained drive at all. It came pretty much on two passes. This is Sagu looking to get the ball back here off the boot of Nestor Higuera. Again, as we approach halftime, the Firestorm did defer to the second half. So that is a big score. If they can get a stop here, that is a big score to go into halftime with the lead and getting the ball back as we'll see a touchback here off the boot of Aguera. Uh, big score for the Firestorm. Yeah, and 542 left. There's still time for a get the ball back and yep, possession. Absolutely. They, they still have that chance for the double dip. Unless Sagu, I, I don't see Sagu 
running a five minute drive here. They should get the ball back at least once. So far today for Sagu's offense, it's been short yardage here and there, and then a all of a sudden 60 yard touchdown. Yeah. So a five minute offense, five minute 42 second offense here, I think is not in the cards for, for Sagu. First and 10 here, three bunched wide to the bottom of your screen to the right of green. He's going to turn around, hand it off to Dudek. Dudek looking for a running lane. He has one, spins off a tackler. Keeps the feet moving. He's got a 15 on first down. Make it 16, moving the chains inside the 40. When it's, there's any room to work, you see this is still the same old kid. This is not a, a slump from Dudek. This is just having nothing to operate with. you got to have at least some help. You can't do it all back there. When he gets any lane, this is the guy that racked up over 2,000 yards last year. First and 10 here for Sagu after the 16-yard run on first down. Green, back to pass. He's got forever. He's going to roll out to his right, and he's just going to get rid of it, live to fight another day. Had a lot of time to throw there and just kind of migrated out to his right and had nobody working with him. Yep, everybody was locked down. Pretty much Dudek was the only man open, but that's probably a smart move to not look his way as that had been a cross-the-body throw all the way across the field. Second and 10 here for Sagu. Four wide, two on either side. Pistol formation here for Briley Green. 5.09 left to play in the first half. Green turns around, hands it off, cuts back. Dudek trying to get into the open field, makes a man miss. What a run by Keaton Dudek. Looked like they had him for a gain of about one, but the shiftiness of Keaton Dudek ends up getting eight. These last two plays have looked like oh 2021 my. Keaton Dudek. Once he gets any momentum, he doesn't need you to block everybody. Just give me a lane. Give me some momentum. Those quick feet, those spin moves. There's a, this, this guy did not accidentally do this last year. You don't stumble and, and no, into 2,000 yards. Yeah, no, you don't do that. Even with the greatest offensive line in the world, you don't stumble into 2,000 Third yards. and two, they get it to Dudek in open field, and he fights for it. He's right at that marker, and he it looks it. like he did get it. They're actually going to give it to him by a full yard. So first down, Sagu moves the chains twice here this drive, and they get into Firestorm territory. Dudek's going to be facing on the DB here one-on-one. -on -one. Two men, really. Gets, gets wrapped up, springs off of that back leg, fights for just enough. First and 10, pistol four wide. Hands it off to Dudek. Dudek looking to get that edge and a good job by that Firestorm edge defender to set that edge and not allow Dudek to go anywhere. And again, I believe it was Jake Farrell. He's having yeah, quite a he's, game. I think he's got four TFLs so far this game. Yeah, I would say probably five or six tackles and four of them have been for at least one yard loss. That one for a loss of three. Jake Farrell, very good game so far. Makes it second and 13 here for Sagu. Three and a half left to play in the first half. Green, back to pass. Quickly to the outside, looking for Odidi. Odidi goes up in and out of his hands. Had the defender falling over. Had to kind of dive over him. This would have been a great catch had he pulled it in. And, and as it, it hit him in both hands. You want to pull those in. I, I say if it hits you in both hands, and it's not, you know, we're talking about fingertips here. You got to bring that in. It would have been impressive, but one you got to make. The third and long now. This is when the Firestorm can pin the ears back, come after you, and just trust that you can't get downfield fast enough. Third and 13 facing Briley Green. Green back to pass. And he lets it go, checks it down to Zachary Johnson, who's got the touchdown. Johnson going the wrong direction, and they're going to have the losing four yards on the play. Just trying to make something out of nothing, and it hurts the Lions' field position. And this comes down to his foot slipping at the 50-yard line. I thought his knee might have actually oh, barely kept himself up. Had he been able to plant that foot solidly, he wouldn't have retreated like that. He might have been able to pick up a couple, which would have then led to a decision potentially on whether to go for it. But doubling back like that will make that call easily for Coach Ellis, and they will punt this one away. They're going to let as much time milk off the clock as they can as they hopefully pin the Firestorm deep. But Arizona Christian will get that double dip opportunity. Here is Lewis. Lewis gets it away. It's going to bounce at the 25 and take another good roll. Ryan Lewis, 
his third punt of the day that lands inside the 15-yard line. Can't ask for much more from your punter, especially facing an onslaught. They brought the house on that one trying to block it. He gets it away. Looking at Tyler Duncan's stats for the day, 114 yards and half of it almost on one play. Touchdown interception. Jake Farrell, eight tackles. Four of them have been solo. The TFLs come after. They those get need to get processed. So we'll, we'll have to find out on Monday how many TFLs he had for the day. I would I'm imagine. Four. I would imagine the solo tackles and the TFL set tackles look very similar. On first down, completed underneath, and then after the catch, picks up a ton of yardage, makes it second and probably eight here. Absolute hinge drive here. We're for the way this ball game's going to go. We're seeing Quinn Commons in at quarterback again here for the Firestorm. So it may not be an injury situation. It may just be trying to throw different looks as you haven't had a lot of success on offense, although it's weird to try it after you throw a touchdown pass. Commons lets it go, and it sails over everybody. Incomplete makes it third and two. Quinn Commons, uh, senior 6'4", 230, looks like more of your prototypical pocket passer, whereas Tyler Duncan is uh, a little bit more dangerous with his feet. Also, He can also get the job done through the air, but uh, two very different looks at quarterback here for the Firestorm. Big Com third down here. So I can get the ball back with plenty of time left to make this stop. Yep, third and two. Two minutes left, Commons. A draw, and it's going to get enough for the first down. The Firestorm will keep those chains moving. They needed two, and they picked up seven on third down. That's a pretty good play call there on third down, the, the draw play. And they opened up a gap. Big fight there from the running back to pick up those yards when he was stood up at about the 26. We'd have had the first down already, but a little bit of extra breathing room. Clock is ticking. Like I said, this could change the game if they can get points on this drive. Commons, back to pass. Cross middle of the field, he's got his man. He's right at those sticks, and it looks like he's going to have enough for the first down, and they will move the chains. Look at Commons stepping up in the pocket yep. amidst the sea of defenders. And he looked right, didn't like his, his read progression there, went to the second guy, picks up 10 yards. James, they are moving. James Alcala on the reception. First and 10, here's Commons. Back to pass, steps up. Let's it go in and out of the hands. Almost intercepted on the outside by Kipatrick McGee. Jump the route, and if he comes away with that cleanly, we could be looking at a pick six. Common stared Oof. that one down a little bit too long. McGee, yeah, that, was, that would have been a huge turn of events. As it is, they are lucky that it should stay second and ten. Commons back to pass, lets it go into the flat. He's got two guys out there. Good open field tackle, get him forced out of bounds by Isaac Gowdy. He had Ward coming out of the backfield, only a gain of one. Does stop the clock, however, for the Firestorm. Which, facing third and nine, clock may not be a factor if the Sagu Lions can get a stop here. The bigger point here for the Lions is not to go down into the half trailing by two scores, especially with the Firestorm getting the ball first. Situation where all of a sudden you find yourself down 22, 26 to seven in the third quarter. Back to pass, Commons. He lets it go, incomplete, broken up. Across the middle of the field by Dylan Kaufman, the safety. Read it well, pressure finally forced the pass out. Excellent breakup. So Zagu will get the ball back with probably just a little bit less than a minute remaining. If anything, that's just a big stand to not allow points yeah. and go down, like you said, two possessions, maybe eight points. So one, two possessions, depending now, on how you look at that. Both teams still have all their – no, no, uh, the Firestorm did, did use a timeout. They did, yep. So Zagu, honestly, this may just – depending on where you get this ball, you may just be trying to run this half out so you don't give the Firestorm the ball back. Low, slow snap on the – Oh no. oh, no, there's going to be a flag for contact made on the punter. We'll see what this ends up being. I'm not sure the variety of what it will be. If it's running into the punter, it's only going to be five yards. Wouldn't be if enough it's for th if it's Personal foul. Roofing the kicker, number 84 oh, of the man. defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that will move wow. the sticks for the firestorm, and Zagu's defense will have to stay out on the field. Roughing the punter is the call. I'd like to get a 
Let's see if I can get another look at that. It looked like maybe they ended up underneath the punter as he got the ball off. We'll see here. Typically, it's, it's the plant leg that matters. And he's, I mean, I, it's one of those situations where I think maybe he did hit what you would call the plant leg, but I don't think he was planted anymore. I think he was completely in the air. He had hopped trying to get over. Devastating penalty as the Firestorm are now in business. Duncan in at quarterback now. He lets it go down the middle of the field, intended for his receiver, Leon, and it is incomplete. Makes it second and ten. So. This is now a, a just a true, true mental test for this defense to get off the field, to avoid those, po those points, to now be just about 10 yards away from field goal range. As it stands, Arizona Christian three straight possessions with points on the board, depending on what they do here. Again, aided by the 15-yard yeah. personal foul, roughing the punter. That almost feels like a turnover. And Sagu brings pressure. It's completed to Quinn. Quinn makes a man miss. He's still on his feet. Brought down in bounds. And a timeout here for the Firestorm as it brings up third down. Timeout. Arizona Christian. Picked up They're enough yards to start thinking about field goal range. And really, I kind of setting up a, a four-down situation here. Because if they don't pick it up here, they are close enough that they, I think they would go for it and, uh, with not much time remaining and how good their defense has been. Sagu's defense needs a play here, needs a big play, needs a sack, uh, needs a throw for a loss. Because like we had said, they, they had avoided, they had completely avoided. That, that is as good as a turnover, in my opinion. I mean, when the ball is in your hands and the penalty hands it back to your opponent, when it didn't need oh, to be yeah, that way. Absolutely. When it didn't need to be that absolutely. way. That goes, that is, it won't show up on any stat sheet like that. But it is the same thing as a turnover. It gives you the ball 15 yards further down the field. It's no different than had you recovered the punt, run it 20 yards, and fumbled it in my mind. That is the exact same thing. Huge third and six here. Trying to keep this a true one score game. Eight would technically still be a one-score game, but I always call this kind of a one-and-a-half-score game because you got to get that two-point conversion. Tyler Duncan, third and six, 37 seconds to play in the first half. Looks like he gets him to go offside. They're going to blow the play dead. And it looks like the Firestorm will get five more yards here to make it a little bit easier. And that is, that's a heads-up play coming out of a timeout to draw them offsides. There is some discussion. They are really talking this thing over. So it wasn't as clear cut as we thought it was. <laughs> Aiden Quinn seems to <laughs> think it's going forward. <laughs> Offside. And it will. Number zero of the defense. Five yard penalty remains third down. So they get Keandre Belcher reset the game clock. jumping off sides. Seconds. They'll put the game clock back at 37 seconds. They blew the play dead. It looks like there may have been contact. Which is good for Sagu because they their only touchdown was given up on a free play like that. But this just makes it that much easier to pick up that first down. Clock would become a factor at that point, but getting closer and closer to easy field goal range. 37 seconds left to play here in the first half. Third and one here for Tyler Duncan in the Firestorm offense. Sends Quinn in motion. He's back to pass. He steps up. He's going to take it himself. He lets it go. Man, wide open. It's Leon. Leon makes a man miss into the end zone for the touchdown. What a play by Tyler Duncan. The defense sells out to stop him from running. And at the last second, finds a man wide open, and he walks into the end zone. We how close was he here? We won't be able to get a good view of how this happened, but that's just going to be the defense over-pursuing on you know, trying to make that big third down stop. And because of that, drifting downfield, completely forgotten about. Touchdown pass, and the air has been taken out of this building. 
The extra point is up, and it is good, and that makes it a 19-7 ball game, and that is as bad as you can picture the half ending for Sagu in this defense. Arizona Christian will go into the, into the locker room here at halftime, barring anything crazy happening on a kickoff, up big, up 12, and in a game that has been as defensive as this game has been, 12 seems like a mountain to climb for the Sagu offense. And there really, you see Arizona Christian will receive the second half kick. And it's just that extra gut punch because you, ha you were halfway into the locker room. I mean, he's got the ball tucked and ready to run and at the last second adjusts. And yeah, it's gonna be coming in there, number 30 for the Lions. He's Kid the Patrick one that's McGee. responsible. Yeah, McGee, he's had a good game, but he's gonna come in to try to lay the hit on the quarterback. And because of that, he leaves his man wide open. 26 seconds left to play here in the first half. Higuera will kick it off, a line drive brought in inside the five-yard line. Looking for any sort of lane to run, and there is nothing there for Isaac Gowdy. So with 17 seconds left to play, the Sagu offense will come out. They do have three timeouts. Three timeouts, 17 seconds. That's not a ton of time to work with. It, this is a, you know, you would love to find a way to get some points here, but there's not a ton of time. You haven't shown a lot of life on offense outside of one play, really. They're going to come out showing it, though. Come out five wide here. 17 seconds, three timeouts. Maybe try to get yourself in field goal range here. We'll see what they decide to do here. Green, back to pass. Looking across the middle, looking for Zachariah Johnson. Off his hands, incomplete. Another ball that was behind his intended receiver. That's been his problem in this game. He needs to lead these guys, especially since they're all athletes. When you can lead your receiver, if he can get a hold of it, he's already running at full speed. 12 seconds left. See if the strategy changes, and I think it will. They're all going to bring it in. Probably just kneel it down, maybe hand it off here to see if you can break something big. Other than that, don't want to run the risk of putting this game out of reach with a late half mistake. The play clock down to two. They do get it off. A quick hitter to the outside. It's Paul Odidi. Odidi. Working towards the sidelines, he does get out of bounds. That makes it second and we'll call it five with five seconds left to play. And I don't know that Riley Green's got a 70-yard Hail Mary in him right now. Third and five, third and six call it actually. Five seconds left to play. Yeah, 70 yards may be asking a little bit much from the freshman. <clears throat> he's just going to hand it off, and that is how the half will end. Dudek makes it exciting. He makes a man miss. He's down past the 40, down past the 50. The horn goes off. Dudek keeps his feet, and he ends up dragged down at the 40-yard line. So an exciting play to end the half. That'll look good in the stat book here. But as it stands, Sagu trailing the Arizona Christian Firestorm by 12, 19-7 and four straight possessions of points for the Firestorm. Two field goals and two touchdowns, a failed uh, two-point conversion mixed in there after that first touchdown. But that seems like a big, big lead in a game like this against Sagu. And the Firestorm, again, will receive the second half kickoff. Things are looking good right now if you're a Firestorm fan. Yeah, they have put it together and they've done it through those game-changing plays. Two turnovers led to both field goals. Then they got the touchdown pass off of a free play. And then they got the second touchdown after a roughing the kicker, roughing the punter penalty, kept a drive alive. So essentially a combination of turnovers and penalties have led to this. And yeah, after a, a half where it was all defense all the time, they are up to 214 total yards. Well, Sagu's at 147. Those penalty numbers aren't 
super high for the Lions, but you can feel each one of those. Timely. Those 20 yep. yards. Those 20 yards on that last drive. 15 to keep the drive alive. And then five to turn a third and six into a third and one that led to a whole litany of things on one play and a busted play leading to the touchdown to where it's it's not quite a mountain to climb yet but with the firestorm getting the ball first to start the half it's going to take a quick defensive stop and something that we haven't seen from the offense all day which is consistency to get back into this one we'll see how they decide to attack this second half there you see the Key players for Sagu and what they've done so far today. Keaton Dudek, 16 rushes for 65 yards, but a, a good chunk of those, maybe about 30 may have come uh, on that last play of the first half uh, when the defense may have not been suspecting or expecting a, uh, a quick handoff uh, from Dudek. Has not really been able to get anything going today. You see Dalton Spencer, six tackles, four from solo. Isaac Gowdy, four tackles. Uh, had that interception on the two-point conversion attempt to buy uh, the firestorm. All around, Sagu's defense has been on the field a lot today, Tim, and that is one of the things that we talked about being afraid might happen here against Firestorm. And it looked like that last drive was a wear down drive, not just from all the time they've been on the field, but the fact that they had gotten the stop after a couple of first downs. And that last play was the first really kind of busted coverage we'd seen, where guys just kind of missed their assignments, they over pursued, and because of that, you end up in this hole you're facing now. Look at Sagu's total rushing yards, 43. Again, that last play by Dudik really has inflated that final number up until that point. I mean, we had, at, at one point in the first half saw them at negative seven rushing yards. Just the, like you said, he doesn't necessarily need a hole. He just needs a little bit of a gap, and he can be dangerous, and he can do something with it. And we are... We are receiving uh, word that the time of possession does, in fact, favor Sagu, which is bizarre because it seems like, at least it feels like to us, that the, the Lions defense has just been on the field for so long. Now you see the, the last five drives for the Lions. They had that one touchdown in the last five drives for ACU. Four straight drives with points for the Firestorm, and Sagu has... Oh, sorry, th four out of their five last drives. Excuse me, there was the, the one time they, had to, they did end up having to punt. The uh, four of the last five drives for the Firestorm resulting in points. And again, when in a game that feels like points are going to be at a premium, a 12-point lead feels more or less insurmountable uh, here for the Lions offense. Something has to be done between now and the start of the third quarter. We're going to go live to our field reporter, Jazz Williams, who is with defensive coordinator Jared Hutchins. Jazz, down to you. I'm down here with defensive coordinator Coach Hutchins. Coach, we've had good moments in the first half, but the second quarter was a little bit lacking. What do you need this Lions team to do to execute and play consistently throughout the entirety of the second half? Well, we just can't give up on broken plays and, and lose our responsibility if we can get back on track, do our job there, we'll be okay. And then we can't have critical penalties on uh, certain downs, you know, third downs and extending drives. We can't allow that. we got to be better. ACU's offense has been interchanging their two quarterbacks. Is this what you expected from the firestorm? A little bit. They uh, they made a switch last week in the, the second half of their game against uh, Louisiana, and they uh, had some success with that towards the end of the game. So we were under the impression they could do it. Um, so, yeah. Going into the third or the third quarter, what do you need to do to tell your team to bring up the morale and get them to play like they've played so well two weeks ago at home when they allowed zero points and even in this first quarter when they allowed zero points as well? Oh, just getting back to, to what we can do well, uh, continue to pressure the quarterback and then uh, make sure these contested passes aren't caught. Yes, sir. Uh, back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Coach Hutchins. Don't go anywhere. Half number two coming your way. The Arizona Christian Firestorm leading the Sagu Lions 19-7 right here on the Sagu Sports Network.
Raising Cane's makes perfect chicken finger meals by marinating every chicken finger for 24 hours. That's a long time. I don't even know what I was doing 24 hours ago. But those mouth-watering chicken fingers were marinating the entire taste-tempting time. Impressive, since 24 hours is longer than most celebrity marriages. On that note, our chicken fingers, cane sauce, crinkle-cut fries, coleslaw, and Texas toast are the perfect marriage of fresh and tasty. Raising Cane's. One love. <laughs> At AGCU, we are committed to forging relationships centered around faith and finance. Our purpose is to provide financial solutions to help you succeed while we type 10% of our annual earnings to ministry and community organizations. Your mercy is never ending, your kindness never fading, Jesus you're always with me, you're always with me. Racing Canes, we're huge football fans, but we're also fans of your local fundraisers and fun runs, small victories and big ideas. And yes, even the neighborhood animal shelter. I was getting to that. Plus over 30,000 other partners in the communities we serve. When you order our hand battered chicken fingers, craveable cane sauce, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade to cheer on your home team, you're also supporting your hometown. Racing Canes chicken fingers, one love. When a lot of people think of the NAI, they think, oh, the, the talent level is less. The talent level is not as great. That is just not true. You know, there's some great athletes out here um, that maybe didn't have the size um, or the athletic ability to play at D1 or D2, but the talent level out here is tremendous. If I could give anybody advice or pitch that to anybody, I'd say give the NAI a chance. It's a great place to play.
Here is the perfect chicken finger. Four of them, actually. They're hand battered. They're cooked to order. And made with love. Raising Cane's chicken fingers will make you say, Oh, yeah. Raising Cane's chicken fingers, one love. I would tell students to expect to make their lifelong friends. It's not hard to find your community because SAGU is home. You can find people that either have the same passion as you or it can be completely different, but at the same time, you're able to network, but they're also gonna help you along the way too. There's such a community there, and throughout my three years at SAGU, I built so many connections, so many opportunities. And not only the students care about you, they pray for you, and they guide you to your God-given gift and your God-given talent. Community starts here.
Welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network as we prepare for half number two. The Arizona Christian Firestorm hold a 19 to 7 lead against the Sagu Lions. And as you know, Tim, here at the Sagu Sports Network, we are all about our social media, wherever you can find us at Sagu Sports Network, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, even if you want to catch some of the Sagu Esports, which is I've been watching, has been so much fun, has been insane. I uh, just want to show some love to our viewers from Arizona and all around the country. Uh, LaRonda Farrell, big fan of uh, big fan of, of Jake, who has been tearing it up for the Firestorm, has been very, very good. Uh, says, tearing it up, Jake, that's my boy. And he has been very, very good. Jamie Alcala, Firestorm, again, assume relation to uh, the Firestorm receiver, uh, has been targeted a couple of times today uh, overall Tim just a, a very good game and and we welcome our Firestorm fans to the to the broadcast and to the network and we always appreciate the kind words like that of uh, Lee great coverage go Firestorm simple to the point you got a compliment <laughs> show your allegiance I love it we, that, love, that, we love our viewers that's the comments we want right there <laughs> <laughs> not, not the ones that say "shut up, Tim." If, if, if we can avoid them. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. That's the, those are the only comments that I make. And I just realized, I just realized I'm on the internet, and so <laughs> let's see 30 of those because I inspired it. For the second half here, though, the firestorm will be taking over first with just really a chance to put a stranglehold on this one. As after their first four drives went three and out, turnover on downs, interception, three and out. They had a 44-yard field goal after interception, a field goal after a fumble, and then back-to-back -back touchdown passes from Tyler Duncan to push this to a 19-7 lead, that last drive being kept alive by a devastating roughing the punter penalty when it looked like Sagu had escaped to the locker room just down 12-7. Now it's going to be up to the defense to keep this status quo and it feels like with the way the Sago offense has been, we're definitely approaching big play territory where it's going to take a pick six. It's going to take a, a, another 80-yard touchdown pass. It's going to take a strip sack to kind of flip this game back. Sagu needs to steal a possession back. They already have an interception, but they need to do something on this drive, I'd say in particular. You cannot find yourself down. 26 to 7. 22 to 7 and 19 to 7 honestly aren't that big of a difference in my book. It's they're both two score games, but you cannot find yourself down 26 to 7. So this is going to be a huge drive for the Sagu defense, who was up to the task for most of the first half. It was only those last two drives that the fatigue got to him a bit. Kieran Woodley on to kick here for Sagu as we are underway here in the second half. And it sails over the head of Aiden Quinn and will go for a touchback. So the Firestorm will come out here on the 25-yard line. We saw a myriad of quarterbacks there in the first half. We saw Tyler Duncan, and we also saw uh, Quinn Commons into the game. It looks like Tyler Duncan will start here nope. in the second half. Oh, yep, yep. Sorry, I, I, I saw somebody else. I saw that one and thought it was an eight. <laughs> I need to get my eyes checked. Uh, yeah, uh, and I think Duncan, I think that might have been just trying to break through what had been a very fierce Sagu defense. If that was the plan, then I believe Tyler Duncan has settled it with those last two touchdown passes. Firestorm come out here, four wide pistol formation. Ward in the backfield. He'll hand it off to Ward, and Ward is swallowed up quickly. They're going to give him no gain there on first down. Keandre Belcher, he is the master of the one-armed tackle. Getting blocked just gets one arm and brings you down. It is just unfair how strong that man is. The, the, one of the all-time great defensive players here at Sagu, and a brand-new role this year as the nose tackle. Second down, Duncan back to pass, taking a shot deep down the sideline, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. That was, that was a pretty good ball on the back shoulder for Zachary Cullup. Through where he had a chance, going to get both hands on it, and I really do believe that's going to be all on Kipatrick McGee, who I believe is the one who knocked it loose. That was going to be a catch, but McGee, who has had some really great plays, had the one mistake at the end of the half there. Other than that, he's been really solid. He breaks that pass up and brings up third and ten. Do they get Sagu offsides again? They do. Free play here for Duncan. Nowhere to go. The ball comes out. It's a live ball on the ground. Recovered by the Firestorm. But a flag on the far side of the field. 
And this will look like it'll be five yards against Sagu, their third offsides penalty of the afternoon. Duncan has started bringing them across. The one touchdown pass came on a free play after an offsides. Then they turned a third and six into Offside. a third and one before Number zero that of last. The defense. Five yard penalty, remains third down. Before that last touchdown pass, as we get the confirmation of the call, that right there will keep this drive alive for another play, make it a much more manageable third down and erase what potentially had there not been a flag. I don't, I think, I don't think the, the offsides, they were jumping back. So it wasn't like the offsides caused that strip sack. Third and five, back to passes. Duncan completes it over the middle right at the sticks. I think he has enough. They're going to mark him right at the 35-yard yep, line. They will move the chains here for a first down. So another penalty. Sagu has not had a ton of penalties, but, man, have the firestorm made them pay for every single one they've committed. New set of downs here for the firestorm and Tyler Duncan. Four wide here. Sends a man in motion. And a flag comes out. That's going to be a false start, it looks like, against the Firestorm. False start. Number nine of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. They get James Alcala for the false start. Yep, and just going to be that, that little foot. He either mistimed the snap or sometimes I think those wide receivers, they're just so ready to go, they kind of lose their balance a little bit. And to regain it, they, they do that little false step. So... Firestorm will get moved back five yards. I believe that's just their second penalty of the game. They had a, a late hit on Briley Green on one of the very first drives of the game. Other than that, they have played penalty-free football. Duncan keeps it himself. He spins and picks up four of that lost five. That'll make it second and 11. Yeah, very clean game so far for the Firestorm. Just uh, like you said, just their second penalty uh, of the afternoon coming here in the third quarter. Second and 11 as Duncan's able to pick up a couple. That's about the fourth time we've seen him take the snap, hardly hesitate and get up the middle. As he's now put up a pretty decent stat line considering how those first four drives went. Second and 11, fakes the, the sweep and looks it across the middle and he's got it completed to his man, Alcala. That's gonna be third and short, brings up third and two. Quick slant inside, Alcala's gonna box out McGee. And right on the money, Tyler Duncan will bring up a third and short. They have done a very good job today in third and short situations. They'll come out four wide. And watch for Duncan to try to just draw Sagu off sides here. Has done that very well today. There it is. And he's going to look back to the sideline. Checks with me, and he's going to transition here to the, the pistol formation on third down. And they will hand it off. Lowering the shoulder is Ward. It's going to be awfully close. He, he is a, about a yard short. So that brings up fourth and one in the first decision here of the second half coming for the Firestorm. And that didn't take very long. It looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field. No hesitation. This could be huge if the Sagu team can give their offense the ball back. Oh, they're going for the sneak. They do snap the ball, and the, the pile just keeps on moving. Initially, it looked like he had ran right into the back of his center and was stopped, but he kept the feet moving. The pile just kept moving forward, and he picks up, we'll call it two yards there on fourth and one, and that'll move the chains here for the Firestorm. Yeah, there was no room to run there. That was just everybody keep taking steps forward. They do the quick snap, and yeah, he was stood up, and it's only thanks to his own guys coming in behind, kind of pushing him Deep forward. Deep shot here on first down, looking for his man just out of reach. The intended receiver, James Alcala. One-on-one -on -one coverage, but a good job by the Sagu secondary to step for step there with Alcala. Isaac Gaddy, and really outside of those two long touchdown passes, one where they just won a battle on a, on a jump ball essentially at the goal line, and then the one blown coverage. Those deep balls have not found any home. Gaddy was, again, step for step. Solid coverage the whole way. Nowhere for that ball to land. Second and 10 here for Duncan. He's back to pass. He's going to actually take off with it. Sheds one tackler and meets two more and ends up losing one. That'll okay. bring up third and 11. That's a loss of one, but watch this. Watch this. He got hit Duncan. by Keandre Belcher and did not go down. 
Belcher not happy with himself either. That's usually I don't the play think he makes. I've ever seen that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a quarterback. That is some strength. <laughs> it's a one-yard loss. There's nothing to ride home about on that one. But to have Belcher get two mitts on you and turn a loss of three into a loss of one is actually pretty impressive. Third and 11. Already five minutes gone here in the second half. Duncan dancing around looking for somebody. He finds his man that is, oh, wow, big hit. He found his man, Derek Anderson. Tried to cut it back upfield and was met promptly by the Sagu defense, and he Carter, paid for it. Carter Lincoln is, lowers the shoulder Oof. and lays down the boom. And now they will bring on the punting unit. Sagu's defense does not allow what would have been devastating points in this situation. Sean Bailey on to punt here for the Firestorm. Offense will get the ball back, but for the Firestorm, honestly not the worst drive in the world. You just took five minutes off the clock in a game you lead by 12. Oh, they fake it. On fourth down, they fake it, and they've got enough for the first. It was a direct snap to the up man, and the Firestorm pulling out all the stops here in Waxahachie. The direct snap went to number 15, Riley Tucker. He takes it and looks like a running back right up the middle. And the C parted for Tucker, covers the ball, makes sure that he has security, and he moves the sticks. And Arizona Christian keeps the drive alive on fourth down. They allowed the entire right side to cave in. They offered no resistance, let Sagu go there, picked up the easy first down. That, that's something you have recognized as coaching, obviously, that that was going to be there for you. And for the second drive in a row, as a late flag comes in there, for the second drive in a row, the Firestorm line up to punt and keep the ball. On first down, Duncan kind of just flipped it away. Pass interference, eight at the defense, spot foul, automatic first down. So pass interference goes against Sagu here. Trevion McNeil, I, I'm not sure. That was a late flag and the ball wasn't catchable. It was, it was thrown away essentially by Duncan. I'm not sure that's the right call. I, I didn't see a ton out there. I mean, these – these uh. Defensive backs, these cornerbacks have been locking down receivers all day on both sides of the ball. Maybe they ruled he just did not allow him to come back to the ball enough, but I didn't see a ton to justify that flag. Well, the new set of downs, Aiden Quinn going the wrong way. He tries to throw it, and he's got, oh, he had Duncan wide open, and he threw it as he was getting tackled. If that's complete, that's a touchdown. So they pull out a fake punt on fourth down, and then a trick play after the pass interference. At that The Firestorm are out here going for blood here to start this second half. And I guess that was the design play because you see, uh, at first I thought it was a desperation move from Quinn, but you saw Duncan immediately <laughs> rolling out on that route. Uh, so not a terrible throw then, obviously. It, it, it led to a not loss of six yards. Back to pass, Duncan, one-on-one, -on -one, looking for Anderson. Anderson adjusts, brings it in towards the pylon. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the two, but incredible move by Derek Anderson. Go up and get it, and then turn around and try. Let's check that foot just out of bounds there at the two-yard line, but what a move to try to get to the end zone. So now, first and goal for the Firestorm from, their own, from the two-yard line. Another loft it up, let your receiver come back underneath, fight for the ball and win. That was just like the touchdown they threw earlier. Sagu almost has too many men on the field. Now I don't think they have enough. First and goal, they hand it up the middle. Ward is stopped. No gain there on first down. Make it second and goal. I think that they did just get that stop with 10 men on the field. Four, five, yeah, that was. Nope, here, here it is. So okay. they, they did have 11, yep. So it was almost Keandre Belcher who was the 12th man on the field right before he got off before the snap. Second and goal from the two after no gain on first. Sends Ward in motion. Duncan will keep it himself. Keandre Belcher this time gets both mitts on Duncan and brings him down. Not getting away this time. That's not going to happen twice. <laughs> it's not going to happen twice. Belcher... Does not buy the fake. Ramps him up, and it is third and goal from the five. This is a possession play right here. 
Touchdown would make it a three possession game. If they were to hold them, it'd lead to either a decision or a field goal. Either way, it could potentially stay a two possession game at that point. Third and goal from the five. Here's Duncan. He's back to pass. He's rolling out to his right, looking towards a corner of the end zone. Incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. And we'll see what the, the Firestorm decide to do here inside the five yard line. Great triple layer defense here. You have a guy in front, guy in the middle, guy in back. Nowhere for the ball to go, and you're cutting off the running lane for Tyler Duncan. So they will bring out Nestor Higuera for the chip shot field goal. I pitched an idea to an Arizona Christian uh, <laughs> staff member this morning <laughs> of a direct snap to Nestor Higuera to let him score. So I, I'm not if they run this, it's my fault. I'm not sure they're going <laughs> to they're, they're gonna do it here. Higuera's kick is up, and it is good. Makes it 22-7 to seven. now in favor of the Firestorm. And, Tim, how do you like this? Coming out of halftime, a seven-and-a-half-minute drive to start the second half and just marching down the field, aided by a penalty, but then two fourth-down conversions, a fake punt being one of them, is absolutely masterful drive there by the Firestorm. The three points stings if you're Sagu a little bit because nine, uh, it was a two, you need two touchdowns anyways. Now you need a touchdown and another one with a two-point conversion. So that, that helps. The bigger part of that drive is half of the third quarter is gone. That was a drive unlike we've seen anybody run against Sagu this year, honestly. We have not seen anybody consistently march like that. And as you mentioned, a fourth and one conversion on their own in the field, the gutsy fake punt call, that was a clinic. The only thing it didn't do is get in the end zone. Sagu bent, 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 and then just didn't break at the right time. And that kept them in this game. They are still in this ball game with a two score deficit. 26 to seven would be a totally different story. Aguera's kick, low line drive, it bounces. Brought in, trying to cut it across the field. He cuts it back up, and he's tripped up just shy the 25-yard line. And it looked like it was Bobby Washington on the return. So Sagu Lions offense takes the field. It's been quite some time since they've had a legitimate drive in this game. They had the ball at the very end of the half for 17 seconds. Their lone touchdown came off of a long pass where Arizona Christian just kind of cleared out. Keaton Dudek, 65 rushing yards, but as I mentioned, about half of those came on that semi-meaningless last play of the half. He has not found consistent running group in this game. Briley Green pumps, gets it out to the outside. He's got Tanner. Tanner plants the foot. He's upfield past the 40. Dragged down past the 45. Colby Tanner has been their best receiver today. He has been the go-to for Briley Green. He's had a couple of great catches. This is a pristine hitch route and just kind of uses his own momentum to throw guys off balance and gets the ball up to the 46-yard line. We've seen Sagu do this on multiple drives, get a big first down play, get to around midfield, and this is where it has not been able to sustain. Go in tempo here. They go no huddle. Same formation, first and 10. They turn around and hand it off to Dudek. Dudek makes that cut. He's up the middle. He's got a good gain there on first down. He picked up seven, eight yards there on first down. A Sagu player loses their helmet. And finally, some wins up front, especially holding Jake Farrell in place. That's all you got to do. You don't got to go th throw guys backwards. Just hold them in place. Whatever sliver of room there is, Keaton Dudek will find it. Green, back to pass. Let's it go to the flat, incomplete. Took a shot after the throw. That's going to bring up third and three. Quick out and well out of reach of Colby Tanner. Third and three, and you imagine definitely with the ball across midfield, this is certainly four down territory, which might influence your play call here. Third and three, they come out here, four wide. Two on either side for Briley Green. Sends a man in motion. He's back to pass on third down. Let's it go off the back foot. No one in the area. We'll see what they do with it here. Yeah, the rest hand is on his flag. They're going to discuss this. They are not going to throw a flag. 
and they are lucky. And Sagu is going to bring the punting unit onto the field, which, I mean, if you're the offense, you just got to be furious about that because that is, I hate to say it, that's a statement about you. Down 15 points, and your coaching staff is betting you have a better chance of pinning Arizona Christian deep and making a stand. And your defense was just on the field for seven and a half minutes. And now you're giving them a no oh. shot. And the, and the 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 snap is bobbled, but Green you know what? gets think, it off. I think that was a fake. No. Oh. Oh. I, I, oh, he had already, he had already he was planted. Yeah, five he, yards into the end I, zone. That's I, not was, <laughs> I was quite impressed until I remembered the rule that once your foot touches. I, <laughs> oh. Calm down, Tim. I was, I, I, I was, I, he, he thought the same thing I thought for a second. I thought we had just seen something spectacular. Then I realized, no, he's, he's already run into the end zone. <laughs> I, I, if you look at this replay, I think this was a fake punt. I think this was a fake punt. If you go back to the snap, Sagu's up men kind of blocking all moved in very unique ways and Watch right here. If you if you go back if you go back a couple of frames to the actual snap, everybody was moving in unique ways, and Ryan Lewis was having a soft hand on that. First down completion from Commons. He's got his man down past the 45, past the 50, lowers the shoulder, down past the 45 yard line. Quinn Commons delivers a strike to Zachary Cullup, and he takes it. From the 20 to the 42, a huge gain there on first down. Another quick slant inside. They picked up a first down that way on the last drive, or nearly picked up one. That time he had plenty of room to work with. Firestorm in Sagu territory. Commons, he hands it off. Here's Quinn. Quinn lowers the shoulder, but is brought down. Gain a two there on first down. Quinn has not had a lot of room to run today either. He had averaged over seven yards a carry the last two games, but his quarterbacks have done just enough to where he has not had to carry much of a load in this game. Second and eight here, Commons back to pass. Quick hitter to the flats. A little too high out of reach for his intended receiver that time, James Alcala. Brings up a big third down as it's that tipping point of a two-score game. Something wacky can happen at any point here to get Sagu right back into this game, but you give up another score here, and it, it won't really be that achievable. Third and eight. Commons back to pass. Let's it go deep towards the sideline, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jonah Leon. So that brings up... Fourth down, and they will bring out the punting unit. Leon sells out, gets his feet in bounds, which is unable to complete the catch. So one big play does it flips the field right back. Chance to pin Sagu's offense deep. The last time they brought the punting unit out, it was a fake on fourth down. We'll see if they uh, decide to go with it again here on fourth and eight. Sagu's definitely spread out a little bit wider this time. And they will indeed punt it low. Line drive kick into the corner. And it'll bounce out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Looks like they're going to mark it out at the 12. And that is where Sagu will take over. You see some score updates. Sagu Volleyball still undefeated against Oklahoma City, number 10 Sagu, I should say, the Lady Lions. One set apiece, 25-13 first set, lost second set, 17-25. We got a piece of trivia here for the Sagu Sports Network. Which Sagu coach is first cousin of the 2009 NFL Man of the Year, Brian Waters? Do you remember him, Tim? I honestly can't say I do. He played no. for the Chiefs, I believe. Brian Waters. So I, we'll get you an answer. I know my NFL, but that one even uh, has slipped me. So <laughs> I, I definitely can't say I know which coach it is. Wrapped up. Who else but Jake Farrell. <laughs> Jake Yet Farrell again. having a game today. And that's at the 11. That is another tackle for a loss. Yep. I, I'm marking at least five for him now. Of course, Brian Waters, a Waxahachie native. 
It's kind of a legend around here. We'll get you that answer here in just a little bit. You saw up there that Sagu volleyball game. It always blows my mind that you can win a set one 25 to 13 and then lose set two. Like the, the, uh, the emotional momentum swings in volleyball are wild. Volleyball is, dude, vo volleyball is awesome. <laughs> Uh-oh, ball batted, and it's brought in incomplete, fortunately for the Lions. Luckily, if it yes. was complete, it was going to be a loss of about five. That, that was a heads-up play by Zach Fuller. I want to see if he dropped this on purpose. This gets, uh, it's actually off a helmet. He's going to catch it. No, he was trying to corral it in. He I, was. I, I thought that's one of those you might kind of catch and then kind of shove out uh, as you get to the bottom, make sure it doesn't get intercepted. Uh, either way, he keeps it from being intercepted. Sagu facing a third and long. Third and 11 here for Briley Green, five wide. Well, if you're like Adam and you love volleyball, you got to tune in to the Sagu Lady Lions. These Lady Lions, it is a special year for Coach Moore and this Lady Lions squad. That's going to be holding. Yes, it is. And the ball batted down. Incomplete. It'll be holding against Sagu, but you got to imagine the Firestorm will decline this. Oh, absolutely. Third down. Yeah, it declined without question. Holding. Ed. Number 78. Jake Farrell that drawing that holding penalty and Fourth then down. still forcing the ball out early to where it gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. You, you got to know when you're a guy like Jake Farrell that you are so, like those holding penalties, they, they just make you feel good. When a guy has to hold you to that extent to keep you from getting back there, that's how you know you're cooking. So Ryan Lewis has been good today with his punts, but this is the first time he will punt from this deep, standing in his own end zone. He would have to uncork one to keep the Firestorm from taking over with great field position. Punting from his own 11. He gets it off, and it's a pretty good end-over-end -end punt. It's oh. going to take a huge bounce. Ryan Lewis, <laughs> oh, my goodness, down at the 20. What a punt by Ryan Lewis, completely flipping the field position. Wow, what a punt. That's 85 yards from where he was standing, and it's going to net the team about 75. I guess he wow. stepped up to the goal line. He was at about five yards deep when he started. That... That helps your average right there. And most, impo most importantly, it keeps the Firestorm from taking over with great field position. Gives your defense something to work with as they try to keep this game status quo, just kind of hoping for that, that game-breaking play. And they, they might have to be the ones to deliver it here. First and 10 here for the Firestorm. Duncan in at quarterback. He hands it off around the edge. Nothing doing there. It's going to be a loss of about two, maybe three there on first down. Look at the wide view there. There's only two purple jerseys not involved by the end. Nine guys all coming in to make that tackle happen. Tyrese Goller on the carry. Ends up losing three, makes it second and 13. I can't get over that punt. My goodness. <laughs> I, I guess I love me some special teams play, and that was that – was, We've seen some good special teams play today, too, on both down, sides. Second down, deep drop from Duncan. He lets it go in the flat, incomplete. Good coverage there by Sagu. Carter Lincoln. Both Carter Lincoln and Kirkpatrick McGee are having very solid games. Lincoln loses his man initially. He was able to get away, follows up, keeps that pass from being completed, and he was there to make the tackle had it been caught. So a third and long for the Firestorm as Sagu's defense is still standing strong after all these drives on the field after some setbacks on defense penalties still standing strong and keeping their team in this one third and 13 Duncan will roll out to his right in hot pursuit he's got some time to throw he's going to let it go down the sideline it falls incomplete again good coverage two plays in a row there for Sagu was Carter Lincoln it's probably the best game we've seen Lincoln play we've called his name in the past he's made some big tackles and has been so consistent in coverage where now it was the offense having to play a little bit of defense there, keep that pass from being intercepted. A little bit of a risky throw. With the con considering the game circumstance, that was a little bit of a risk from Tyler Duncan. So the three and out is forced. The Firestorm on to punt. They get it off. Some contact made with the punter, but it looks like it was incidental. No harm, no foul. 
And Sagu will take over from the 41 after the fair catch. Best field position of the half for the Lions. You look around the Student Athletic Conference and how about that? Texas College with a quick score on Wayland Baptist. Seven that game, nothing. That game just beginning, but the steers. We we all picked the pioneers without much of a thought in that one. And at least for the moment, wow. Texas College okay. jumps out quick. All right, Texas College. First and ten here for Sagu. Bradley Green sends a man in motion. And a busted play there. Looked like he wanted to hand it off. He's gonna keep his feet though. Cuts it up field, lowers the <laughs> shoulder. A busted play there turns into a gain of seven for Briley Green. It looked like he wanted to hand it off, maybe turn to the wrong side, miscommunication. He tucks his shoulder and he gets seven on first down. Very good quick reaction. Dudek's going to lay a block and you, you love to see that from a young guy. You have a blown play. That could have been a disaster start to finish. Instead, you start this drive off on the right foot. Second and three here for Sagu. Green sends another man in motion. Turns around, hands it off to Dudek. Dudek showing patience, lowers the shoulder, gets enough for the first down, and into Firestorm territory. You got to think, Tim, right here, this it, drive is a touchdown is a necessity it, on it, this drive. This is absolutely a, the, the biggest drive of the game so far for Sagu because if you can get a touchdown, all of a sudden the game that's felt out of reach for half an hour is right back to within one score. Hands it off to Dudek again. Dudek. Trying to get to the edge, not much work in there for Keaton Dudek. He's going to pick up one on first down. The edge is not there. There's just too many. The, the further out you go, the more chains you have, the more links you have to have in the chain. And there's just not enough consistency along the Sagu offensive line to make it out that far, which is a killer because that's where he succeeds. They hand it off to Dudek. Dugan, he has got some space. Makes a man miss past the 30, 20, 15, 10. Looking for the pylon. Touchdown, Lions. Keaton Dudek takes it from 43 into the, into the end zone. And like we said, Tim, a touchdown is essential on this drive. Keaton Dudek puts the offense on his back and gets Sagu their second touchdown of the game. And you saw the Sagu offensive line just selling out, diving at guys, just desperation, trying to open anything up. And if you open it up, the man takes it. Keaton Dudek over 100 yards rushing on the day now, gets the touchdown. And barring this big extra point, as the Firestorm have too many men on the field, and the, fortunately, the snap went through the hands of the of the holder. Prior to the snap, timeout, Arizona Christian, their first and of you, the half. Oh, if you, you're the first one, you hate you don't having wanna, to use oh, that timeout. Man, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth right it, there. In a game that is suddenly, barring an extra point, about to be one possession with a quarter remaining, you hate having to they, – they had to burn a timeout earlier on their two-point conversion attempt, and that's just a, a head count situation. But, yeah, I mean – Dude, it can't be contained for forever. It, it's a matter of time. It is a matter of time. Now you see the trivia, the, the answer to the trivia question. Who, which Sagu coach is first cousin of the 2009 NFL Man of the Year, the Walter Pitton Man of the Year, Brian Waters. Kevin Pointer, special teams and wide receiver coach. He's got to be happy as a special teams coach. They are playing out of their mind today. So Coach Kevin Pointer, uh, first cousin, Walt, to, to the to, – to, to Brian Waters. How about that special teams moment? You're pinned inside your own five. Brian Lewis crushes that punt, <laughs> flips the field position. You get good field position, and your offense assembles its first drive of the game. Ended with that Keaton Dudek sprint to the end zone. And just like that, we have ourselves a ball game with just over a quarter to play. And here you go. So we thought they were going for the extra point. They are going to go for two right now. There's, I mean, there's so many philosophies to this, so many debates on what to do. I've heard it said best, you want to know what you need early on. So if you don't get this, you know what you have to do going forward. Two-point conversion attempt here for Sagu from the three. Green takes a snap. He's going to hand it to Dudek, a long stretch play. Dudek short of the end zone, and it will be a failed two-point conversion attempt for Sagu. Just took too long to develop, and another one that won't go in the books as any sort of stat, but of course it's Jake Farrell in on the tackle. So a little bit of a deflating moment there. 
keeping it a two possession game. Like I said, there's a lot of debate about what you do. And I think from a fan point of view, you always want the extra point because you're like, well, I want to know I'm one score behind. I don't want to be two scores behind. I want to be a guaranteed one score behind. But from a strategizing point of view for the rest of the game, you now know you have 16 minutes and 22 seconds to get nine points, to get 10 points, however you can get them. If you're sitting there with that eight and you end up failing on that two-point conversion with a minute left, now time's up. Time's too late. So. Texas College jumping out in front of Wayland Baptist. They gave up a score to match their own, but Texas College getting a second touchdown, up 13 to seven. All right, Texas College looking for their first win since 2019 against Wayland Baptist. Kick out of the end zone. Firestorm will take over at the 25. And even though that two point conversion was not completed, the game feels very different all of a sudden. Sagu's defense has held strong these last few drives to keep their team in it. And the offense has finally shown some signs of life. That one touchdown earlier was really just a one play situation. You can't base a strategy off of one play. They put together some solid plays right in a row. And most importantly, they got Keaton Dudek moving. Here come the Firestorm. Commons is going to keep it himself and get brought down for a loss. So a good play there on first down by the Sagu defense. Braxton Bailey right in the backfield, wrapping up the quarterback, taking him to the turf for a loss on the first play. And these two, both teams are going to walk away with a lot of TFLs under their belt. It oh, has come pretty yeah. much nonstop. Although that right there is, I guess, technically a sack. Back to pass is Commons. Deep drop rolls out to his right. Looking for his man in the flat. Incomplete was looking for the running back, Arion Ward. Nowhere to put it but there, really. Had he thrown it on target, you had two guys who can jump that route. That is essentially a throwaway. So a third and long. And if you have two quick three and outs in a row with a sandwiched around a touchdown run, you just might start to feel the momentum shift for real. Third and 13, Commons, three out wide to his left. Back to pass, looking deep down the sideline, one-on-one -on -one coverage, has his man, brings it in for the first down. Derek Anderson, this is a perfect ball over the shoulder. That is impossible to defend. Yeah, I mean, their only completions on those routes have been run and thrown in such a way that these Sagu defenders who have done such a great job of squaring up and, and staying in place that... Yeah, you saw his right hand there. He said he told his receiver to go. He sees one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that's the kind of relationship this quarterback has with his receivers. Ward on the handoff. Looked like he was stopped initially for no game, but kept the feet moving and picks up three on first down. Either way, that is a huge conversion to get yourself towards midfield, keep this drive alive, and burn away the rest of the third quarter. That will do it. Put your fours up. We are headed for the fourth quarter. The Arizona Christian Firestorm leading 22-13 over your hometown Sagu Lions. It has been a fast third quarter, aided by a seven-and-a-half-minute field goal drive for the Firestorm. Sagu putting up a touchdown of their own to make it this nine-point deficit. There you see some of the, the stats here. The offensive number is looking a lot better for Sagu than we saw in the first half. 100 yards rushing and over 100 yards passing. So it's definitely been an improvement. There you, how, there you go. I love that comment. It said, how about that punter? Number 81 having a game. Ryan Lewis, again, I'm just. We, we got the best fans because we got fans that appreciate punters. Here's our second trivia question. Which former NBA coach of the Suns, Supersonics, that could be a clue, and Kings, Started his coaching career with Arizona Christian. I'm guessing that's not football. Supersonics. Oh, okay. Supersonics. Super so that is a clue for everybody out there. Suns, Supersonics, and Kings. I, I am going to rely on you for this because if it's if it's outside the Philadelphia 76ers, I'm, I'm almost useless when it comes to any sort of trivia. So I'm going to lean on you, on you for this one. Oh, which former NBA Type in chat what you think the answer is, yeah. and we'll, we'll give you a shout-out. You no, get it right. No Googling. We are trusting all of you not to Google. 
There's got to be an Arizona Christian fan watching right now who knows that by heart. <laughs> you know your team. Second and eight. Commons fakes a handoff, looking deep down the middle of the field. He's got Anderson. Anderson, it's a foot race, and he will win it. Down to the five. Touchdown, Derek Anderson. There's going to be a flag that comes out at the five-yard line. And this could they be an enforcement of my least favorite rule in all of sports. That quick I believe you're right. I think this is a taunting play, penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 of the offense. That penalty, that penalty will be penalized from the spot of the foul. 15 yards, first down, ACU. I hate the score this score does not count. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Okay, you don't want guys taunting. I get it. The fact that that is a spot foul from the NCAA down to the NAIA, I hate this rule with a burning passion. Tim, he waved at his own sideline, and they threw a flag. I mean, I get it's college. They're going to call taunting with an with a iron fist, but don't take away touchdowns. There's nobody within 30 yards of them. I hate this rule so much, and from the NCAA down to the NAIA, this rule has to change. This is not sports. 15 yards on the extra point, 15 yards on the kickoff. Do not take away touchdowns. I hate it. These refs did nothing wrong. They're just enforcing the rule. I'm not mad at these refs. They're enforcing. You're mad at the, you're mad at the rule. I'm mad at the rule. I, I agree. These guys, I'm with you. And I I'm with you. the moment they threw the flag, and these I'm sure you asked these guys, on Thursday night, hanging out at Applebee's, what they think of this rule. They hate this rule. I hate this rule. Four yard gain on first down. <laughs> Brings up second and six. Commons takes a snap, back to pass. We're gonna get a false start penalty here now against Arizona Christian. And after the touchdown taken off the board, Arizona Christian with a, a five yard Backstep here, which will make it second and 11. Everyone on the offense except the center. Five yard penalty. And there you call. Everybody, everybody on the offense except the center. <laughs> Makes it easy. Which I always say, well, isn't it really the center's fault then? Failure to snap, I think, should be the call then. Uh, <laughs> the center didn't know the snap count for a change. Man. Taunting call takes away a beautiful pitch and catch from Commons to Anderson. And now we see Tyler Duncan step into the game. Second and 11. Tyler Duncan, four wide. Duncan, back to pass. He's got forever to throw. Directing traffic, lets it go. Falls incomplete. And that is just spectacular coverage downfield. Sagu locked up. This is the first time we've seen either quarterback today really have that much time to throw. And it's an absolute credit to what Sagu's doing down the field that they are locked up the whole way and that ball has nowhere to land. Third and 11 here for the Firestorm. And if the Sagu defense can hold them to a field goal here, You got to chalk that up as a victory, especially when it looked like you were giving up a long touchdown pass. Here's Duncan rolling out to his right, looking for his receiver on the outside. Incomplete. That brings up fourth down, and it looks like the field goal unit and Nestor Higuera will trot out onto the field to try to make this a 25-13 ball game. Either way, that call took what was about to be a at least a 16-point game, more than likely, barring what they might have done with the two-point conversion. That, that, they would have just kicked the extra point for sure to go up by 16. And now at best they can go up by 12. This one's going to be a 38-yard or harder, hardly a gimme, but, you know, we, Nestor don't miss, right? Why? You said it. You said it, Tim. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. You would have owed Mr. Uh -oh. You would have owed Mr. Higuera a letter after the game had that missed, Tim. 38 yards. Aguera hits the ground after the kick. He's up. He looks like he's okay. I was Makes about, it 20. I was, about to, I was about to say slow getting up, but I don't know if there's any other way up for <laughs> Nestor Higuera. He nails that field goal. They go up by 12. They restore the two touchdown lead, essentially. Sagu needs two touchdowns. And he did get bumped. He got bumped there. It wasn't, wasn't enough to draw a flag. But there was a little bit of a bump. If you hit... 
if you hit Nestor Higuera enough to put him on the ground, you don't think that's enough contact <laughs> to warrant a flag? But, but, <laughs> I'm just saying, Arizona has some really good soccer players too. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man, I, I think I think that was definitely a why. You know, I mean, if I were a kicker. I'd probably just sit down after every kick and just look at the ref and say, hey, you want to? I mean, why not? <laughs> There's no calls for embellishment in football. We've got embellishment calls in hockey and, uh, and soccer. Even occasionally, once in a blue moon, you'll see one called in basketball. There's no embellishment calls in, uh, in football. Speaking of basketball, we're going to get you the answer to the trivia question here just after this kickoff. Here's yeah. Higuera. We've got to see if some Firestorm fan got that in the chat. Into the end zone for a touchback, so Sagu will take control at the 25-yard line. Here is your trivia question, Tim. I'll let you read it again. Which former NBA coach of the Suns, Supersonic, so a little bit of a time frame, and Kings started his coaching career with Arizona Christian, Paul Westfall. Did Remember? you know that, Tim? I did not know that. I, I, nope, I, I did not. I honestly, I, I've never heard of Paul Westfall. My, my, I can't say I can, off the top of my head, recall a ton of coaches in NBA history outside of the ones who either coached in Texas or are your obvious ones, your, your <laughs> Phil Jacksons. And we've been informed by our resident basketball <laughs> savant, <laughs> let's just say, that he was the creator of the running gun offense in basketball. So I've heard of the running gun in football. I, I, I'm trying to imagine what that looks like in basketball. I don't know. I didn't know Patrick Mahomes was a point guard. <laughs> As Keaton Dudek gets thrown for a one-yard loss on first down, he found his running room on that last drive. Can he regain that footing to get Sagu back within one score? Second and 11, they'll hand it off to Dudek again, and Dudek loses his helmet, and they, got, they have to blow it dead at that point. Another rule I hate. Hey, you just... Eh. <laughs> that, that, no, no, I disagree. That, that's all about player safety. There I, is nothing wrong with what Derek Anderson did at the five yard. There is absolutely no, nothing no. wrong with what he did. Do not throw a flag. Let the kids have some fun. It, I am, I'm, uh, man. And if you've got to flag it, do what we did for decades. This is a new rule. This has not always been this way. And just put it on the kickoff. NFL yep. puts it on the kickoff. Put it on the kickoff. Extra point if you want to try to make them miss it. It's a false start on Sagu, and it's going to be third and a mile. Third and 18 coming up here for the Lions. Illegal snap. 66 of the offense, five yard. Oh, penalty. illegal snap. It's third down. Illegal snap. They didn't want to call that in the first half when Bradley Green faced 19 people rushing him after the snap. <laughs> but now they call it. I think that's an inadvertent snap. Uh, I, not, an illegal snap is essentially the same thing as a false start, only it's entirely done by trying to deke out a defender with the ball. So going to have to go long with this one. Third and 18, Briley Green sends a man in motion. He's back to pass. He steps up, got to buy some time, lets it go incomplete. And that will bring up fourth down and 18. Not much of a chance to catch it. And had he caught it, it was going to be a solid eight yards short of the first down marker. So another three and out for the Lions after that crucial touchdown drive on their last time out. Two Keaton Dudek runs get blown up and a false start makes the yard to gain almost insurmountable. Late getting onto the field. Sagu's gonna have to snap this ball quickly. They're needing another monster punt from Ryan Lewis. Lewis takes a snap. He does get it away. It's a good punt, a booming punt. Fair catch called for and brought in. Again, that's about all you can ask your punter to do, and the true freshman has been phenomenal today in the punting game. And you see a Jordan Francis calling that fair catch there. He didn't go for the fair catch last time, and he saw how far that ball rolled. That time he was not going to let it. He was tracking back 20 yards almost to get underneath that one to prevent that. Because And you could tell by the way it was coming down, that was going to be a Sagu bounce potentially inside the 20 again. Before we get started here on offense, shout out to Nate Swift. The correct trivia answer in chat, Paul Westfall for the last trivia question. Told you we'd shout out whoever gets it right, Nate Swift. First down, Duncan back to pass, bobbles a snap, he completes it to Anderson. Anderson throws a stiff arm, 
Gets driven out of bounds. Good game there on first down. Make it second and four. Arizona Christian can be conservative on this drive. Go to the sidelines. Keep the clock moving. They burnt off seven and a half minutes. See Derek Anderson. What a game. Five reception, 146 yards, and two touchdowns. Should be three touchdowns. But the taunting rule. Back yep. to pass is Duncan. Duncan lets it go. Complete in the flat. Lowers his shoulder. Has enough for the first down. And the Firestorm will move the chains. These timing patterns for Arizona Christian have been so good today. They figured them out. And Sagu, they've been running them quick enough. They've picked up the pace. Sagu has not been able to jump any of these routes. James Alcala on the reception. Moves the chains. Makes it first and ten. Back to pass. Duncan. Let's it go in the middle of the field. It is in and out of the hands of Anderson. Really good coverage and a good ball by Duncan. Hit his receiver right in stride. Just could not bring it in. Those quick slants are still working. That is all Lontarius McLean getting his hands in there and dislodging that pass. Second and 10 now for the Firestorm. Duncan comes out four wide. They Another get, free play. No, they keep the flag in their pocket. Duncan oh, wow. rolling out to his left, looking for something. Goes deep down the middle of the field, incomplete, just over the head oh, of there his is, intended no, there receiver, the Alcala. There, I didn't think Sagu got back online I don't, uh, uh, onside quick enough. I was looking at the side official, the official on the sideline to throw the flag, and he, he pumped me, pump faked me. He looked like he was going to do it and then didn't, but there is a flag like in the, the back middle judge of the field. What is calling it. Unless this came out later, this could potentially. We'll, we'll just wait and see what this head official has to say. They're, they're asking Sagu, so this is going to be on Arizona Christian. It's going to be holding on Arizona Christian. What Sagu want to do here facing third and 10? Coach Ellis has made his decision. And Ellis will receive downfield, mm -hmm. number 76 of the offense. Five yard penalty, remains second down. So they will take the penalty. As, ooh, I thought it, that that point of view, it looked like Belcher was still offside. No flag comes out, and the slow developing play. So Sagu will take the five-yard penalty. I'm not sure if I would have taken that. I, would have been I, third and ten. I think I would have taken the third and ten over. It's just a five-yard, maybe a ten-yard penalty. Back to pass. Duncan, deep drop. He steps up. Fakes, pump fakes. He's going to take off himself, looking for anything and driven out of bounds. A whole lot of running for one yard makes it yep. third and 14. So the decision pays off for the Lions as they hold strong here. Great coverage downfield. And that quick pursuit from Dalton Spencer, not letting Duncan get that corner, forces him to even kind of retreat back, trying to get to the sideline, not wanting to take the, the hard hit. Third and very long as we're under 11 minutes to play in the game. Sagu. Their back's against the wall. They cannot afford any points at this point. They have got to hold Arizona Christian at 25. Third and 14. Duncan back to pass, facing pressure. Steps up, avoids the rush, and then hits the second wave of pass rushers. And will get brought down, makes it fourth and very long here. So Sagu's defense gets a stop, and the Firestorm will come out to punt. That lightning fast pressure from the outside. Forces the offensive line to retreat. Forces Tyler Duncan to step up. And there's just too many men to take care of. Big stand. Another big stand by this defense. Keeping this game manageable as we hit the 10-minute mark. The punt is off, and it is end over end. It bounces right along a 25 and takes a good bounce in favor of Firestorm. A flag deep. Deep in the uh, deep two, on the field, two, two flags, flags inside the ten yard Thro line, thrown towards no one in particular. So maybe too many men on the field. There was a bunch of substitutions happening. I don't know if it might be too many men on the field. Because it's, bo it's both from the very back judges. There's a Christian motioning that it's on the Lions. There was some confusions in substitutions, so it very well could be twelve men on the field.
Long discussion from the refs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve up front that I'm counting, and the man back. So that would be thirteen. Is there is there a? You know, I think if you have thirteen, it's legal. More teams should do that. C circles back around. Yeah, there was some confusion there. You gotta, we gotta wonder why more field. teams don't try that. During the play on the defense, that penalty will be declined. First penalty down. will just be declined because it just would have been a five-yard penalty anyhow. And seeing as the punt went well for the Firestorm, pinning the Lions inside the 20, they will just stand pat. You know, I thought they got some pretty good pressure to the punter. It seems a little less impressive now <laughs> that they had uh, 13 guys in the field. And what a shootout. 21-19. There, there you got a feed there. The Pioneers and the Steers. 5-11 left in the first. Wayland Baptist. Up 21-19, and it looks like Wayland just took a – I couldn't tell if that was Texas College or Wayland. But here we are on first down. Green looking for Odidi. Odidi oh. brings it in. Down past the 40, 50, to the 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. One play, a score. I was about to tell you, Tim, this is a drive where Sagu needs a touchdown with 9.49 left to play in the game. Well, there's 9.36 left to play, and they got it. Unbelievable. Odini has to go up high, holds it in, and it's just a foot race. The next 65 yards, he never breaks stride. And Sagu with wow. their third long touchdown of the game. They don't do it any other way, but long touchdowns. And they are right back in this one. 25-19 pending the extra point. They are just hanging around. The kick is up and good. It is a five-point ball game with nine and a half left. You just can't say enough about how this team is hanging into this game. This game has felt over and done with time and time again and they just hang around paulo didi two catches 89 yards a touchdown and basically all of it on that play 83 of it on that play first play one play touchdown wow i was about to start a conversation with you tim how important is it is it here to get a quick score apparently they beat me to the punch uh, that, that's that's how important it was <laughs> They said, we got to get this before Adam gets it out of his mouth. A nice 12-second <laughs> drive. And with the way your defense has looked, and what else could you have possibly expected from this game? Like we said, Arizona Christian has dominated this series in every way but the scoreboard. Sagu has been within a touchdown every single time. Last year, Sagu trailed by 21 in this game. In the closing minutes, rallied to within seven, recovered an onside kick, and lost with the ball at the Arizona Christian Five. This is just the way these games go. These have been absolute classics every time we have called them. And that is not what you want to do on the ensuing kickoff, is kick it out of bounds. Just about the first special teams mistake we've seen from the Lions today. It's been all but flawless other than that. Ball will just come out to the 35, though. It's not an extremely devastating. It's not that putting out to the 40. Kickoff out of bounds. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. But good field First position down. here for the Firestorm. Back in at quarterback is number eight, Quinn Commons. It's been interesting seeing this rotating quarterback. It's been interesting to me because I feel like Tyler Duncan has consistently been the better quarterback. Uh, Commons has had a couple of throws here and there. I don't know the full purpose of this committee as, I mean, to me, Duncan's been far and away the better quarterback all game. Back to pass is Commons. Commons swings it out to the flat, almost brought in with one hand, ends up being incomplete. Uh, it's, I, I think it's just a difference in in looks from what you get from each quarterback. Like we said earlier, Tyler Duncan can hit, hurt you with his feet as well as his arm, but Commons looks to be the more traditional pocket passer, big arm, can get it down the field. The, the problem is, is, he, is they've been running a lot of short patterns. They, don't have, the they don't have time. Yeah, there's not enough time for a deep down the field passer. The only, the only deep down the field passes they get are those beautiful rainbow balls where you just have to drop it right there in the bread basket. Other than that, it's, the, these balls are getting overthrown to these little screen patterns. Commons has looked, he's looked better Setting his feet Look in the out. pocket, and he gets killed on the rush. Wow, big hit. Damaris Heron coming off the edge. I was just about to say, he looks more comfortable in the pocket and making those throws. But that time had no time. Unblocked was Damaris Heron. 
Well, actually, no, that's going to be uh, Keith Hargraves. Keith Hargraves on the edge. And, I and apologize. the Firestorm are super fortunate that that's all that was because that ball just kind of got lofted out into the middle of the field where there was nothing but five purple jerseys around. If somebody pursued, that was an interception and potentially a pick six. Here's Commons, third and ten, back to pass. Let's it go down the sideline, out incomplete through the arms of Anderson. Would have been short of the first down anyway, and slow to get up is Ooh. Derek Anderson. Looks uh, like he might have landed wrong on that out. shoulder. He did Injury hit hard out. on that uh, turf. He, he comes back to that so quick. Oh, and you hate that. He's just kind of rolling himself off the field. You hope that's just a little stinger. And he can walk it off. It's, it's a hot, hot day. Those stingers can come out of nowhere when you get hit. And it's not something worse. They're going to check his shoulder pads. Either way, quick touchdown from the Lions. Quick three and out from the Firestorm. And don't look now, but Sagu has a chance to get the ball back down one score. Have another trivia question here. What Christian recording artist and three-time Grammy Award winning winner has performed at both Arizona Christian and Sagu. I was about to say, who, who, who went to Sagu? <laughs> that, that, that's one Grammys. How do I not know this person? How? The punt is away. Hmm. No rush. Spiral punt. Fair catch called for and brought in. Sagu will take Christian. over at the 26-yard line. Okay, I'm just going through because I, I can't tell you who's performed out in Arizona, but let me see here. I'm thinking through Sagu's uh, – performance history. I don't think she's won any Grammys. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I feel like, did Toby Mac once perform at Sagu? That is my off the wall guess. I think Toby Mac once performed at Sagu, and I don't know if he won any Grammys, but he should have. First and 10, here's Bradley Green, hands it off to Keaton Dudek. Dudek showing patience. He's got some room to run here. Lowers his shoulder, spins off a tackler, has enough for the first down, will move the sticks. So Sagu down 25 to 20, nine minutes left to play. They get a three and out on defense, and now they have a chance to drive down and take the lead here with a touchdown. It's been more than tough sledding for Dudek today, but you can only give him accolades for how he's kept grinding and put together some big runs here in this game. Dudek. Met immediately by a host of defenders from the Firestorm. Ends up losing one yard. I, I'm, I'm going to go, Tim, with Lauren Daigle. That's my guess. Okay. Yeah, I remember her performing. I was thinking Carrie Joe, but I don't think she's won any Grammys. I'm going Lauren Daigle. That's my guess. All right. I'm, I'm going T-Mac. Second and 11. Briley Green turns around, hands it off to Dudek. Dudek. Looking to get that edge, tries to cut back. Nothing doing there for Dudek. He's going to lose another yard here, making it third and 12. One big step forward, but then two steps back. They were never able to seal it, and as Dudek tries to double back, it's Jalen Mitchell waiting with bated breath to easily take down Dudek. That's where Dudek will sometimes excel when he can double back on you. And had Mitchell not been there, he would have ripped back around the end. Third and 12, under eight to play. Green sends a man in motion. Back to pass. Quick pressure, swings it out to Dudek. Dudek trying to make a man miss and cannot. That is a wonderful open field tackle by Stefan Peters. Keeps his eyes on Dudek and just watches the waist. He doesn't watch the eyes. He, he keeps his eyes on Keaton Dudek's waist and makes a move towards the legs. I mean, that is what you have to do with Keaton Dudek in the open field. If you let him lock eyes with you, he'll fake you out. Brings him down, and Sagu will be forced to punt as we approach seven minutes remaining in the game. Firestorm stands strong after the big Odidi touchdown. Sagu, we're getting a little late getting out here on this punting unit. Fourth and 16 punt incoming here for Lewis. And that's going to be a delay of game. Just took too long getting out onto the field. Prior to the snap, delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. That's the second time that we've seen the special teams. It's a little slow. I mean, it, operationally, uh, once they get the ball in their hands, it's been fine. 
but second time in a row that it's just been a little slow getting the guys out there. Obviously, you had 13 men on the field on the last Arizona Christian punt, or the one before that at least. So now fourth and 21. Clock will stop with 6.48 remaining. A lot of shifting by Arizona Christian. They've already had a big special teams play with a fake punt. Would not want to see a block here. Low snap. It's bobbled and then finally gets it away to oh. Lewis. And it is a bad punt. It's shanked to the left and takes a firestorm bounce out of bounds at the 27-yard line. 26-yard line. Uh, after such a sterling day of special teams play from the Lions, it all falls apart right there, dribbled in, unable to get a hold of it. And the, the truth is, the Firestorm hadn't brought much of a rush. The wind was in his face, so it was doubly impactful. The Firestorm hadn't brought much of a rush. He would have had a little bit more time to collect himself, but of course you don't know that as a punter. You think, I've been standing back here for two and a half seconds. I've got to unleash this immediately. So after just an amazing day from Ryan Lewis, one botched play has handed the Firestorm a golden opportunity to seize back control. Duncan back in the game, hands it off to Ward. Ward lowers the shoulder, keeps his feet, and then out of bounds. He, he fumbled it, but fortunately <laughs> for the Firestorm, it, it trickles out of bounds. But that will move the chains for Ward. See here on the replay, when does this ball come out? Just kind of, kind of fight his way to the sideline, and it gets ripped out right, right there. Right at the end, yeah. So, I mean, he was still well in bounds. He is lucky that the momentum of the ball took it out. First and 10 here for the Firestorm. 6.15 left to play. Duncan turns around, hands it off to Ward. Ward cuts it back. He's brought down quickly. No gain there on first down. Another possession drive here. The Lions can hold the Firestorm to a field goal attempt. It would just be an eight point game. With less than six minutes to play, a touchdown would probably be too much to overcome. There's not enough time left and the Firestorm are not in any hurry. They know the clock is their friend now. Lions defense has got to stand strong one last time and keep it a one possession game. Second and 10, here's Duncan. He hands it off. Ward tries to bounce it outside. Cannot do so. Big stop by Keandre Belcher and Braxton Bailey on the outside. Belcher goes over the top. Bailey takes out the legs, and it's third and long. It almost feels like the Firestorm are a little bit content with just running the clock at this point. I'm not even sure if, they, if this is a passing down for them, if they're just kind of okay with, you know, not risking that big play on an interception or something. Third and 13 under five to play. Here's Duncan back to pass. Rolls out to his left. He's being pursued. He's going to tuck it and oh, run. Oh, That's oh, about oh. all he could do in pursuit. And that was dangerous with quick pursuit from Keith, Keith Hargraves. Hargraves. Yep. And Hargraves going, I mean, he tucked that at the last second. If Hargraves had gotten there an instant before, that could have been dislodged. So after the shanked botched punt, yet again, this Sagu defense is equal to the task and will at least force a field goal attempt. And this is a big field goal here for Higuera. Very big. To put them up eight. Good snap. Good hold, the kick is up and it is good. And that'll make it 28-20. So with four minutes on the stadium scoreboard exactly, four minutes exactly, Sagu trails by eight. Oh, here we got the, tri the trivia question. Again, the question, what Christian recording artist and three-time Grammy Award winner has performed at both Arizona Christian and Sagu? Let's see if anybody else got the answer right. Michael, Michael w. w. Smith. Smith. Oh. I didn't realize. Oh, I was thinking wrong era. I did not realize that we were going back to the 90s oh, with these man. artists. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I should remember that because I got those invites for a year that he was playing last year. You know, 
<laughs> a friend is a friend forever when the Lord's the Lord of them. And Michael W. <laughs> Smith has just been spreading that love from uh, Sagu to Arizona Christian. I was thinking too modern with it. Man. I know. I, I, I could have got Carmen, <laughs> Kirk Franklin. Hey, if Carmen had performed to Sagu, I'd have been there. I, he, he was never there. <laughs> Sagu Volleyball. There we go. The undefeated streak continues. Three to one win over Oklahoma City. So they drop that second set and then take sets three and four. OCU used to run that conference. Yes, and it, now it, it's it. the Lady Lions still undefeated. Top ten. It's a new day in the Student Athletic Conference. And Coach Moore has these Lady Lions playing outstanding volleyball. So here you go. A game that Sagu trailed 22 to 7. At one point in this half, they have 25 to 13 here in the fourth quarter. They have scrapped their way back in. And with four minutes on the clock, they are down by eight points. They need a touchdown and a two point conversion. Nothing else will do, but they can stay alive in this game. They've only done it through big plays. Let's see if they can sustain a drive out here and get this game tied. Four minutes to play, eight point game, green. Looking out to the flat, incomplete. His intended receiver, tight end Zach Fuller, cannot bring it in. And I said this last time, and I'll say it again today. It, it just needs to get lasered in a little bit. There's some really errant throws, but for the most part, these are not passes that are sailing six yards over guys' heads. It's just a, a, an, about a half yard in front of him, about a half yard behind him. He needs to laser these in and he can be efficient. Second and 10 here for Briley Green. Back to pass, looking to the left side, incomplete. Airmailed everybody. Looks like he was hoping for a quick turnaround there and just unable to get back around quick enough. Troy Edwards, the intended receiver. It was Troy Edwards, yeah. It's kind of that back shoulder target. So only seven seconds off the clock on this drive and a quick third down. Third and 10 here for Sagu in their offense. This is a big third down play. Green back to pass, steps up. He's going to get brought down for a sack. That's going to be a loss of three. We haven't actually seen a ton of sacks in this game as he's been getting rid of it. That time was swarmed. The punting unit would come back out, Ryan Lewis. So Coach Ellis asking his defense to get just one more stop here and give his team a shot here late in this game, down eight. Sagu has all three of their timeouts. They need to kind of hurry up here. They don't need to be wasting time. The clock is running. They're slow again getting that punting unit out of the field, and they're still slow. Number 24 just now getting onto the field. Valuable seconds ticking away here, and they may take another delay a game. They will. They will take yes, another they delay will. a game. That is a head scratcher. This this has got to get cleaned up in the week. Penalty. Just Remains fourth down. practice getting the punting unit onto the field. As even more deficit in the five yards is you lost 40 seconds there. Slowly getting the punting unit onto the field. So five yards will make this even less likely to give you great uh, flip the field position. But more importantly, Arizona Christian's going to get the ball back now with less than three minutes to play as you wasted an entire play's worth of play clock. Lewis gets the punt off. It's a low line drive punt. It's brought in. Fair catch called for by Jalen Patterson. So that is where ACU will take over the firestorm from the 46-yard line. And Sagu's defense, at this point, it is a necessity to get a stop and get off the field here with no points allowed. You probably have time, depending on when it happens, to give up at max one first down. Other than that, it has got to be off the field and quickly to have your offense with any time left to mount a last-minute drive. Tyler Duncan in at quarterback will hand it off to Quinn. Quinn up the middle, falls forward, doesn't quite get a yard. It's going to be second and 10. And Sagu will take their first timeout. Yeah. Save the time as quick as you can early on. Timeout. Yeah, they're going to mark that no game. Assembly. 
First of that. Zagu's defense has been up to the task continually throughout this game. It's been bend, don't break. They have bailed their offense out of some turnovers, uh, out of a, a, a bot punt. They have kept this team in the game. Last trivia question here in 2019, Arizona Christian traded its 20 acre campus in Phoenix for a 68 acre campus in Glendale with what Pac-12 school? Well, that should be pretty, pretty self apparent. We see Wayland leading Texas College 21-19. I think that one's a little bit tighter than we had expected it to be. Absolutely. I, I don't I don't what's your guess here for this trivia question? I I'm, I'm I want to go with Arizona. I'm not sure I'm not sure what what else it could be. I believe Arizona State, right? I guess uh, Arizona uh, State uh, could uh, be. Unless I'm unless I'm totally getting my Pac-12 geography, which I mean now that uh, USC is going to be in the Big Ten. Who cares about geography in college football, right? Man, it doesn't matter uh. anymore. <laughs> Second and ten, Duncan will keep it. He rolls out. He wants to stay inbounds, and he does. He'll yeah. take the sack and keep that clock running. Yeah, you, you saw him. You saw the Lions trying to drag him out of bounds. He's just fighting to dive back in. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I think Arizona State is the answer on this one. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. Now, Sagu has elected to let the clock run this time. Probably going to save that. Just, I, I, I agree with that. Save that one timeout. Because time you're in out. such good shape. You're in yep. such good shape now. And what you do is you're kind of daring Arizona Christian here. You want to try to throw the ball? It's third and 15. You want to just take? Oh, no. Now, Sagu has used their timeout. Timeout. Southwestern Assemblies, their second of the half. Not sure what the delay was then. Now you don't get anything. You lose the timeout, and the play clock about was at 20, around. About 20 seconds ran off the clock. Yeah, the play clock was already at around 12, 13 seconds, so you only end up saving around 12 seconds. And now Arizona Christian has the full bag of tricks to go with. They can just hand it off and make you use your third timeout, or they can try to sling it and pick up what would essentially be a game-ending first down. So I... I, I, I can see the decision either way, either to call the quick timeout or to just let it all play out. But the way it worked out was, was not what you wanted to see with a good 20 seconds burning off. Third and 15 coming up here for the Firestorm. A big third down for the Sagu defense. If they can get off the field, they give their offense a chance to drive down with an eight-point deficit and potentially tie this game up. Late here on the fourth quarter, 2.07 left to play. Here's Duncan. Duncan will just keep it himself, looking to roll to his left, and he's brought down. That's a huge sack. They, They're going to say, did they, I didn't see. It looked like he was he was down. I'm not seeing a ruling here, and the official did point. He was okay, down. I'm about to say, that because that was insanely risky by Duncan. It almost looked like he was taking an intentional sack. Keith Hargraves again has just, has just we'll been all see. over Tyler Duncan today. He is up. He's up. He's up. Time out. That is a fumble. I don't place. think he was the ever down. Time That's time. A, he was not down. Now, unless they ruled he was in the grasp and it was a total lack of forward momentum. If, they, if they're calling the momentum, then that's fine. But he, it didn't look like he was it, down when a, that ball a came A knee out. or elbow never hit. And now we're not going to get an official ruling from these refs on if they were saying he was essentially in the grass, wrapped up, and so they blew the, blew the play dead. Here's a good look at it. So. Weird call uh, on offense of what was happening here. So we're definitely not going to – so we'll, let's, we'll watch and see if this ref signals anything. No, and shin's right, not – right his elbow. Right here. His, his, his hand yep. goes up. Yep, good call. So his hand goes yep. up yep. before – so I'm going to say he's ruling he's in the grasp and essentially – all his, four momentum had stopped. His right elbow might have touched the ground as well on that backside. So Either way, big loss, and Sagu has a chance to get decent field position here after the huge sack. He definitely went the wrong direction. A good punt, though. End over end. Brought in by Jalen Moss at the 35-yard line. So 102 seconds, 65 yards to go. That's, that's well, I must say, it's plenty of time because the only way Sagu scored so far is in uh, – 50, 60, 70 yard chunks. Yep. Uh, but you got plenty of time. Clock stops on first downs. Uh, that, what an absolute moment for a freshman quarterback. 
who has struggled time and time again. Oh, we'll get a really good replay of it here. Wrapped up. Watch this right. Watch this. His elbow in with with the ball in his hand. I thought it didn't. It didn't touch. So but, it's but you purely. See the it's purely on the official yeah. who blew the play dead. Yeah. And and maybe he said it was play, four momentum had stopped. They try to swing it out wide to Dudek. It looked like it was tipped. It brings up second down. So and, and I, I see the case for that. I, I'm, I'm not yeah. I'm not saying that's a dreadful call. If he called him, if he blew the play dead because he thought he was down, it's the wrong call. If you blew the play dead because he said, hey, his momentum stopped, he's wrapped up, plays dead, we protect quarterbacks, it's fine. Five wide. Second and ten for Briley Green. 140 to play. Here's Green. Back to pass. Let's it go across the middle of the field. Diving attempt incomplete. The intended receiver, Justin Campbell, could not could not get his arms underneath it. it almost. Almost, almost slid yep. that in there. Would have been huge. Third and ten, obviously. Goes without saying this is four down territory. And you don't have to get all ten here. No. You can get six. You can get five and make it fourth and manageable. It, it, you want guys beyond the sticks, but if there's nobody beyond the sticks, take something. Third and ten. 136 left to play. Green, three to his left. Back to throw. Let's go across the middle. Off the back shoulder of Justin Campbell, an incomplete, and that brings up fourth and 10, and this is the ball game for Sagu. And he misses the quick slant here, wide open. That was the better route, and either way, it got thrown behind him. So yeah, this is it. Uh, the entire game comes down to this. So 10 yards, keeps it alive. Turnover on downs, and it's victory formation for the Firestorm. All on the line here with 92 seconds to play. Fourth and ten, the freshman quarterback, Briley Green, sends Tanner in motion. He's back to pass. He lets it go, and it's inter it almost intercepted. It matters not, as that will be a turnover on downs and effectively end the game for the Sagu Lions as Arizona Christian takes over with an eight-point lead. Sagu out of timeouts. And the Firestorm free to run the clock the rest of the way. And there wasn't really much of a shot there. It was a, a quick hitter. No way for the receiver to get back to it. And had he got back to it, he'd have been about three yards short of the sticks. So that's going to be a very disappointing ending after all of that for your defense to give you multiple cracks at it with, with the game on the line, with a chance to do that, to end it on four straight incompletions. And you hate to say it, but four straight passes that didn't have a chance. And so the Firestorm will run out the clock and yet again, somehow, some way in a game that felt so lopsided from times, they're going to walk away with a one-score victory. <laughs> they are going to, yep. their seventh consecutive one-score victory over the Sagu Lions. And what, and from, a, from one point of view from Sagu, it's very fortunately the last time you'll be seeing the Firestorm for a, the foreseeable future. From our point of view, these games have just been classics. We have gotten to call classic after classic between these two squads. The biggest win in Sagu history came yep. when they beat these Firestorm 43-6 to as the breakthrough moment in the C.J. Collins year. So it's been, a, it's been a benchmark test for the Sagu Lions. We, we've been calling games together since they entered Sagu's conference. Yeah. Yeah, it has been that long. We remember when they were the new kids on the block and rung off 15 straight wins. The, the <laughs> tides high. have changed a little bit. The Number conference zero. has caught up. And, and it, even defense. though they have, like I said, they have completely run the, they run the game runoff. win tally up Please on Sagu the outside of the very seconds. first meeting Multiple between these two teams. They've safety. never run up the score. These have always been great games. And I think, I think we both say, well, you know, we got our hearts for Sagu, and it never hurts to lose a team that has consistently beat you. We're going to miss calling these games uh, between the team and, and red and yellow because they have been a delight, and they have always offered us some very thrilling ball games. For now, they're going to move to one and two in the conference. This is their first conference win. It could yep. be huge because they have never lost more than three games in conference since they joined. A loss today would have all but assured that they have some big games ahead of them. And maybe, just maybe, there's a slight bit of life 
in their hopes to stay in that upper echelon in their final year here in the Sooners. So the teams will shake hands as the horn sounds and the Firestorm hang on for a 28 to 20 lead win that is. And look at those final stats, almost impossible to believe that we ended up with 300 yards for both teams after the way that it, first half You went. know, it, it, we talked about it. it looked like it was going to be a defensive battle between the Firestorm and the Lions, and there ended up being 48 points scored. I, I think if you had the over-under on total points, I mean, I don't think you would have thought it would have gone over the 35 mark. And it was, it was definitely, it opened up in the second half. And, and all, you know, three big plays for the Lions, uh, for the Firestorm, it all really was those two big touchdown passes uh, late in the first half. All they did in the second half was kick it through the uprights three times. No surprise, Nestor Higuera uh, comes out here and has himself a five field goal game. The man just kicks. This, I mean, what else can you say? But this is his stadium, man. <laughs> he he went viral here back in March of 2021 and with the game-winning kick, and now he punches through five field goals, only one extra point, uh, but combined accounts for 16 points. Tyler Duncan ends up with 206 total yards, two touchdowns, under 50%. The defense is really shine when you look at that bottom stat there, third downs. They yep. got these teams off the field. That's why there were so many punts. Sagu with just 17.6 conversion rating, which makes sense because their touchdowns all came on one play quick hitters. Meanwhile, the Firestorm just slightly over one for five, uh, hitting at just under 21%. Jake Farrell, he cooled off as the game went along. It feels like Sagu really zoned in on him and made sure he was no longer a factor. But in the first half, he was the difference maker. Derek Anderson, I don't think we saw him after that injury. Hope he's okay. Five catches, 102 yards, and two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Two touchdowns, even if you take one off the board. Uh, 20 yards a catch. He had a great ball game. Sagu, those penalties. 10 for 68 is not something that's going to make you, you know, throw a brick through the wall. It's not the worst ever, but they were all at the worst possible time. And we come down to the biggest plays of this game. The roughing the punter call. Yep. Late in the first half, Sagu trailing 12 to 7. They're about to get the ball back, probably run the half out. Instead, it keeps the Firestorms drive alive. They go into the half up 19 to 7. Then to start the second half, they hit Sagu on that fake punt to get three more points. Two different times that the Firestorm trotted their punting unit out there that resulted in 10 total points in a game that was decided by eight. I'm no mathematician, but, uh, <laughs> but those were some big game-changing plays for the Lions. Keaton did it. Good to see him have a little bit of a breakout game. Uh, most of it came on a couple of big runs, but he breaks 100 yards for the first time this season. Hopefully the Lions can find a little bit of footing with him as they move forward. They were doing better in the second half, showing some different blocking assignments. Gets him 128 in a touchdown. Paul Lodidi had the one big catch for the touchdown that brought Sagu back into this one. And then Dalton Spencer, game name we hadn't called a ton this year yet, comes alive with eight total tackles and a sack. Good game for both teams. Again, the last time that we will see Arizona Christian, at least in conference play, who knows down the line if there's any bowl games, playoff appearances, hopefully playoff appearances for both teams. Uh, as we had the early game today, uh, we'll take a look at everything that's happening currently and what's to come in the Student Athletic Conference. Of course, Arizona Christian 28-20 over Sagu. Wayland Baptist has opened it up a bit against Texas College 34-19. Lion and OPSU kick off at 7 Ottawa, number seven, Ottawa, Louisiana Christian kick off at 10. Trap and game. Lang <laughs> Langston and Arkansas Baptist kick off at 8 o'clock today, tonight. So uh, a really good slate of games here in the Student Athletic Conference. Uh, as far as the SAGU Sports Network, as you see, as you see the standings there, um, as far as the SAGU Sports Network goes, our next broadcasts Friday, September 30th at 6 p.m., those Lady Lions volleyball broadcast, 6 p.m. Central Time, take on John Brown, and that's always a fun, uh, a fun matchup. John Brown, both in volleyball and basketball, always seems to play uh, Sagu really, really well. And then as far as football goes, the next day, October 1st, one week from today, homecoming, 2 p.m. kickoff, Arkansas Baptist 
Tune in around 1 o'clock for some special pregame festivities. It's always a fun time when it's homecoming around here. We're excited. We get back-to-back -back games. We get to watch Sagu two weeks in a row, which is always a treat. Uh, you can watch today's game along with hundreds of others on demand anytime on the Sagu Sports Network YouTube channel. Be sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button. For game notes, news, highlights, and more, follow the Sagu Sports Network on Twitter and Facebook. Final score again, Arizona Christian, the Firestorm, 28, the Sagu Lions, 20. 90% of our crew at the Sagu Sports Network is made up of college students in the Digital Media Arts program. Tim, you came from that program. I came from that program. We both know how much work and how much effort is put into these broadcasts as a student, so we want to take a heartfelt second to say thank you to those students who come out here and sacrifice their weekends and their evenings to put on these broadcasts for everybody at home and everybody watching wherever they may be. I'm Adam Ferguson, joined by Tim Roberts, and on behalf of our sideline reporter, Jazz Williams, and our entire crew, so long from Waxahachie, Texas, and thank you for watching the Sagu Sports Network.